Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, I'm coming back on Facebook Live on the Open Gambia platform. If you just bear me a minute, let me share this video and the program can start. If you can hear me loud and clear, just please uh, comment to let me know that you can hear me loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Um, it's been a while and I'm just coming out because I really have to come out uh, for this program. Um, it's quite important. Uh, there's a lot of inquiries going on as certain aspect of uh, the, uh, the, the, the controversy is not being understood from certain quarters because of the way it came out to the uh, public. And I'm um, the reason for this program are several and um, one is to address the concerns from genuine Gambians who uh, have fear for my well-being, who cares for my well-being uh, in fear that I might be in trouble and, um, and so forth. But again is to address to certain Gambians that are conflicted. And um, it's not to address them directly, but for the people they might influence. And um, because of the people they might influence is because of their lack of understanding uh, of what have, is transpired. And the other aspect is to debunk and stop this intimidation that started by um, Ababaka Jawara and thinking that it's going to work on every person. And people, if people like myself are silent, then they will get what they want. But again, what I'm saying about these conflicted people, the only reason I am addressing this is because of people that might follow them genuinely, thinking that they are genuine, thinking that they are truthful, thinking that they are uh, doing the right thing. But it's not because of I, I am bothered by what they do or what they say. Because we all knew, I mean, any Gambian who perceived to be influential, I mean, will be known by any conscious Gambian, or if any conscious Gambian come across them, they will know uh, what is genuine and what's not. What is important to address this issue because there are a lot of people that just follow the social media tags and uh, will be misled uh, and, and, and into this. Why am I saying about this fear? I know some people are using the case of um, Ami Drame, the, 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 the lawyer, uh, when Ami Drame uh, threatened to sue an individual, and that individual came out with his um, tails between the legs and apologized. That person have a reason to apologize because he lied about what he said. But let me put it clear. I will come to that. But I will let Gambians to know this is not the first time the Gambian government have threatened to sue me. Let me put that to Gambians. This is not the first time. This is the first time they come came to air. 
You see, there's a lot of things that go behind the scenes that I don't discuss on air. Um, or I don't confront by reacting to it on air. No. I deal it, I mean, on very strategically how I need to. And the first case uh, came from Bart and Baby. And in regards of the IIGM assets, how they dealt with the assets. And I am vindicated for that. And two, I, I can give you instances how I was vindicated. Bart and Baby went through an intermediary. They went through an intermediary who I have great respect for. And approached that intermediary and sent the threat through the intermediary to say that he was going to sue me if I don't come out. And and uh, what disassociate him from any wrongdoing in the uh, process of I mean, disposing of Jamis' assets. One. Two, he said, again, I insinuated that uh, um, uh, the um, Binta Sise, Binta Sise, I insinuated that Binta Sise was his girlfriend, which was not true, he said. That message was sent verbally to a friend of mine who I really have regards for. I might seek permission to publish my, my reaction. The only reason I'm seeking permission, I'm seeking permission from my friend for confidentiality. But I can even say that I own the reaction, I can do it. But I mean, I don't want to bring him into any disrepute for the relationship he has with Barton Bader or others. I reacted in a nutshell by asking him to take my friend out of this and let him bring it let him bring it to the public domain because my allegations my my assertions were done on public let him bring it on public uh, domain and he's a public officer and i dare him to come and he said he was coming to uh, they will come here to sue me they will come here to sue me i dare him to do that but two i and i said to him I did not even, because I don't like going into people's private life, until it crossed. And I said, what I said about Binta, I didn't even use, I, I said I even regret not using the right um, um, words for that. And I said, because what I said in my allegations is, is uh, Binta is close to you. Is a close, I mean, acquaintance or something like that. I could have said, he is your girlfriend. I did not do that. And I said, if you are ready for disclosure, I said, bring bring, bring it on. Barton made a run with his leg, I mean, tails, I mean, between the legs. Why? Now, why did I say I'm vindicated? One, the National Assembly finally, a National Assembly member, probably he's empathetic to your agenda, that's why, but other National Assembly members should have done that. As asking the Minister of Justice to unveil, to reveal who the properties are sold to. And if the government ever do that, that's my vindication. That's my vindication. That's my vindication. I have shared my evidence on, on that matter, on that matter. Because I wrote extensively, pointing to every um, I mean, I mean, person that dealt with that allegation. And family members of mine profited from that, and I named them in that this thing, which is Alpha Bari and others. And Bitter Sisi, for that matter, is not a family member, he was my classmate. And my his elder brother was my classmate as well. And our families are my parents, and her, her grandparents are, are, are very good friends. And my elder siblings, and the family with them. Um, are very good friends to her mom and dad. After a year of making, after 18 months of making those allegations, um, insinuating, he said I insinuated that he was in a relationship with Winter uh, Sise, but um, came out and married that same Winter Sise. That's where that is. That's one. Two, she, she, um, Jigo, uh, she, Say Ahmad, say Tijan Jigo or say Ahmad Jigo, I've been forgot the name. Threatened 
pursue me in the United Kingdom as well. He, he went through intermediary as well. The reason I didn't come because intermediaries, in fact, pretending <laughs> that he, he was searching for my address. I volunteered my address. I volunteered my address and I welcomed him. And I, I, I went through the intermediary. I didn't, I didn't bother to write to him. I went through that intermediary and I said to him, if you guys are ready for disclosure to all the transaction properties that went through here between you, Sheikh Omar, and, and any other person that, that can be even linked to the government. As if you are ready for the, the, the disclosure, let's go on. Because I am aware, I did not say that to him, I am aware of many other aspects, but I am a human being. I am overwhelmed by evidence coming in. And I'll tell you, Gambians are not heavy lifters. Gambians, we are not heavy lifters. I'm not an institution. I'm a human being. The amount of dossier I have, one, the person you need to trust to work with, two, the person who would ready to do what is required in order to, 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 to do the work. Mainly, everybody will just want to be political or they just want to be personal, they want to be selective, they want to go for a certain individual because of um, whatever problem they have with that person. That's one thing I will do. I, I am not political in a sense that I have an agenda for a single political party. I am better than that. I, I am better than going after any human being on earth. On earth, I am better than that. I am better than representing any interest group. My consciousness is far better than that. Say, Amar, Jigo, this is. Rather than taking it to court, they run away. And that's why, again, when these allegations, when I made this, um, I don't even like using the word allegations. I just have to use it. When I made my statement, I stand by it. I stand by it. You know, people don't understand. Some people don't understand. Many people advocate for many reasons. But I'll tell you one thing here today. My advocacy, my sacrifice is not bound by any single personal interest. I would not fight for anybody that would do wrong. I would not stand with anybody that does wrong unless I am supporting that person to recover to, to, to be good. That's why I cannot be part of mainstream politics establishment. I am very knowledgeable when it comes to politics. I have participated in politics in this country. And if I was pursuing a career, I would have pursued it here. Just last night, I was in a dinner. And they're still wondering, why did I not pursue politics in this country? I played an instrumental role in the West Midlands here to be part of the strategy, strategies for the male who happened to be a conservative, who happened to be gay. But do you know what? I happen to know him and I know he's a good person. I know he have an anti-establishment mindset and I know that he was going to deliver it. I did not, I, I did not prejudice because of he was gay. I did not go against him because he was conservative. I voted labor, I vo voted liberal. I was not paid a penny and I could have made money from that. I did not go in there to look for political career or any other I mean, I mean, um, benefits. But my convictions and knowing the person, knowing him to be a good person, and that mayor is under strict. Under strict. One of the most difficult political campaigns where almost every Local um, I mean, or, or consequences have been uh, dominated, controlled by, by, by either uh, Labour or, or Liberals. I went to that campaign and I went and be part of the ethnic uh, uh, um, strategies for, 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 for the ethnic, ethnic minority vote, which was unthinkable. 
We have to fight the prejudice of him being gay, and we have to, I mean, fight, I mean, I mean, I mean, him being conservative. But we put policies. We 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 have strategy and, and advocate for those policies. We 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 when when and meet stakeholders within communities, be the Sikhs, Muslims, Hindus, and 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 African communities. And not only he won, but he retained his seat. If I gave my service. In any means, mainstream, it had belief in any mainstream leader, any mainstream political party, I would have made an impact. But I choose to do what I do, and I'm doing making an impact from where I am. Those who don't know will not know, but I am satisfied of the impact I'm doing. What I know is a Gambian thing, or it's an African thing. What is it? What? What is? What? Um, what is? What's? Lucas Nekal, Lucas Nekal, what is, what is, what is in for him? What is in for him? People believe that Lord effect, I'm not Lucy Buga. Yes, Lucy Buga won't be Gambia again. Gambia is an idol. That's all. That's how I've been brought up. That's how I live my life. I've been consistent. From childhood to who I am today, it's not a surprise to people who know me. That's why I am ne never angry. I never come back for people who don't know me and make allegations because people who know me they won't. They will tell you my character. I am not a perfect being. I am not. I have never claimed to be. But it, when it comes to my advocacy, I come straight for that. Then for people whom I have associated with before. And that's where I am. I don't I am I am selective. But selective in the sense that what matters is if we can deliver something for Gambia. I am not selective because of my tribe. I'm not selective because of my religion. I'm not selective because of my sex uh, of, of sexuality or anything or creed or anything. I have even as I said I would even sacrifice to help to rehabilitate people, their image or their personality. I work with people who might have to be tempted to as extent in order to, to, to pursue the greater good. But that does not make me complicit into their crime and I will be ready to stand to make sure they answer to the justice I proclaim. Yes. I make sure that, and regardless of my relationship with you, when it comes to justice, I am not selective. To tell you, I've addressed the intimidation and everything else, I cannot be silent. And I am not out here to look for political office. I am not here to advance anybody personal else career. I am not here for what I can gain from my, what I do. I am even reluctant. Reluctant. I know nothing wrong with it. But that's me. Reluctant to, to, to monetize what I do. Which is very essential. Which I am I mean, fighting to overcome. Which I know is necessary, in fact, for me to be more, more, more effective, which I will try. I'm trying on. But to say or think that I will have anything personal to anybody, be it President Barrow, be it a minister, be it a cartel member, a businessman, or anybody else, no. And you'll be surprised how much relationship I have with these people. It's Gambia for that matter. You should not be even. I am not saying that I am not related to these people. But I have fantastic relationship with, with, with the relative of some of these people. Or most of almost or almost all these people I talk about. You think it's easy? You think it's easy for me to talk about their relatives and next minute go and sit down with them or see them or chat with them? But it has to be done. If we cannot do that, that's why why our country is what it is. I will not be disrespectful. I will not insult. That's why I will not fabricate. I don't need to fabricate because what benefit does it do? And people 
hundred million. Be it outside the United Kingdom, be in the United Kingdom, be in Africa. Will tell you, in fact, I become even a m more of a changed person since I started to advocate or or or, or, or hugging the limelight. Hardly people will see me in anything. Go 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 to my social media feed. Go to my social media feed. I am not doing it just for fame. If I was doing, <laughs> I would be hugging. Hugging it big time. I have just came back from holiday. I've been to the most aesthetic resorts in the Senegambia. Stayed in the best accommodations. Dined in the best food. Company of brilliant people and very senior politicians for that matter in Senegal and others. I did not put it on my feet. The only bit I put on my feet are backgrounds of uh, certain things because of my the memories I have in those places. I have so many. I have tons of videos, but on, on almost all those videos meant something. Not just about me, I'm not that vague. Then why am I doing this? It'd be important. Again, I have no problem with that. Because, as I say, if I don't have problem with something, it's because of I know my intentions. I have no problem talking about myself. No. I can talk about anything about myself. I am an open book. People who are close to me will tell you. Yeah, there's limitations of what I can say in the open like this, but I mean, if it matters, I can discuss anything. But it's important, especially in this case again. I know many people have heard some of these things many times. But I just want to put a perspective of who I am into this. Because it's, this is, I, I'm saying that I'm not going to discuss the legal I mean, uh, thing. We leave that to the courts. And I pray for Adam about to take me to the courts. And if Adam Abarrow take me to the courts in the United Kingdom, in the United Kingdom, and Adam Abarrow did not leave office that year, that's up to Gambians because of what would have, what would come out. Gambians, I, it's sad that what would come out, most of it, if it is known to Gambians, but the the coverage, the way it will be be, be 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 available in a legal setting, if Gambians did not remove Adam Abarrow, then that's Gambians' problem. What is happening in that country affects me, not personally. It doesn't affect my income. It affects my income te technically because I, if I was putting 30% in supporting people, probably I'm putting 50%. It affects my emotion. It affects almost everything. But what people say directly, what people term as directly, I'm not paid by the Gambia government. When the Dallas goes down, my, my pound uh, appreciates. I, I don't want to talk about my assets, where I have them or not have them. It doesn't affect it. It appreciates if I have, if my or my family have, it appreciates. My economically, apart from that, what I give will be affected. But if even investments might not be affected. But it's Gambia I have. And for one reason, but I cannot say for it's the environment I've been brought, brought up. My father is a national, liberal nationalist to the core. I, I could go to example, give you examples. That's where my identity comes from. He refuses any other identity apart from the Gambian we are. I was brought up in an environment very cultured, influenced by people, radical, I mean, ideas, but love for country, luckily just instilled. And that informed the choices uh, I taken, the decision I made, 
throughout my life. My inability, ability, and what makes me excel because of the love of country and founding my purpose in life. Let me emphasize the purpose in life. And that's where I am. My happiness is deprived from the seeing the greater good improved and seeing my 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 my, my imprints in that great I mean that contribution, how little it is. Indeed in that <clears throat> gave me a lot of experience. When you believe in something, give you relief, give me a lot of experience and again inform me for the career I choose to take. I am a better entrepreneur than a political or intelligent strategist. I am a better entrepreneur. I've, 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 uh, <laughs> which, is, which, which, is, which is a natural gift. Let me give you that bit. From being a, a young boy, um, because I have, um, I have I mean, sisters and cousins and grew up in that environment, where at a certain age you start to sell. And this was about selling groom soup, the groom's, groom's thing. And I was only the male child that was part of that. I went with a con competitive instinct and I bit all my sisters and cousins in selling. From, from selling the small bowl, making profit and scaling it to uh, putting a big bowl of, uh, I mean, and um, groom soup. And because of what? I find something, an ingredient that make my groom soup taste different. Was the mixture of vinegar and lemon. But I kept that, that, that secret of using the vinegar, bit of vinegar in it. And when I upscale it and my father saw this, and obviously the masculine sexuality came into it and he said, let me not see you do this again. He stopped me doing that. Through my secondary school career, I was making money. Through my military career, I was making real money. And all legit. I left the military for two years. I've never knocked on anybody's door for employment. I've gone, I've run a butchery, I've run forex, I mean, exchange, I've, 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 being a middleman for cigarette, uh, cigarette importers, making lots of tons of money. It never made me happy. What really made me happy was cultivating an idea because of situation that arises to partner a friend of mine, Bob Now, Bob Ito Now, may his soul rest in peace, who was a gifted artist, to take my finances. Uh, with my expertise on board, an entrepreneur, and his talent put it together to form a company called Gumprint Studios. Gumprint Studios. And it's not the reward was not the money we were making. At that time, it was Studio A and, and um, silk screen printing, a Lebanese company in Banji. They were our competitors. Within a short time coming into the market, with my input, we took a great share of that market and go, got even get, I mean, I mean, created or got into even another side of the market. But the joy was the concept and everything was youths. We created a safe place for youths to congregate. We created a safe place that we can mentor youths who were at the age of being radicalized. We created a safe place where cigarettes, uh, alcohol, or, or, or weed would not be smoked. And most of the youth, youths have, have already started. And some of those youths stopped. Most of those youths were dropouts or, or people who did not fit in our uh, educational system. 
but the safe space we we created for them make them find their talent within two years to uh 28 i mean 1992 to 19 uh, early 1995. some of them became artists others we put instill in them the pride to go out there and sell which is very difficult for some of those youths if you understand their background every half dozen of t-shirts they were making 120 dollars every half dozen of t-shirts and they have an input in the producing the t-shirts and we make so limited editions and different many things some of them were making a salary within a month that civil servants were not their civil servants were not some of these youths stop 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 weed smoking some of these youths became better um uh, improved their their distance their their relationships with their parents some of these youths improve their relationship with, uh, towards women. Yes, all these things we we and so that we it's it wasn't about the money we were making. No, it was the environment we created at the Gump Studio, Gumpin Studios in Bakau, and people from the outside would not see it. And I remember this thing. I have a namesake. Uh, my eldest uh, my eldest sister named me after um, a son. And he was, he must have been about two to three years. And I was happy. Because Suleiman, Junior, Junior Suleiman said to my mother, I am going to school. He was not even in law school. And my mother said, we school. He said, the company studios. If a three-year-old can sense that was a school, because that was what we created. These young men become very respectful to because the respect they gave to us, we make them to portray that out, respect themselves and portray that out. And by extension, young women were this thing influenced as well. Because most of these young men used to bring their girlfriends who were doing better in school. To impress them this these are the kind of cultures we we interact with understand us because we we were a, they, they were a mirror image of us we were not academically achieving we did not achieve academic, academically but we we were productive and these young people wanted to say we are different we are not this kind of this but that and and i don't want to name names but pe people who know knows some became even that was the generation in 1995 some of them became i saw them become big rap artists i remember artists and some most of them are in scandinavia today this is what is all about now leaving that i'm going to the army was informed was informed if you understand the radical um ideas the radical thinking I have. And you know, and I'm, it's sad we did not have the security sector reforms. Because part of my input for a security sector reform was this understanding the mindsets of soldiers, understanding the mindset of citizens that joined the army. I technically did a research on that. As I said, I am not academic. But it, it comes to my interest, life, people, Gambia. I mean, that's where my passion is. I go out there and do my research. Everything I do is backed up. I don't come out and shout. I do when I'm angry, my passion. But it's based on knowledge. It's scientific. It's logical. And there's a, always a method in what I do. Going to the army, understanding how radical I was, that was a purpose why I chose the army. 
as I said, I have what it takes to, if, to, to be successful. People who knows knows. If it is having money going to entertainment venues, <laughs> people know knows. We went to venues, and there's no nowhere that we could not have gone or afford it. There's no, I mean, not only in between the Gambia, we, we crossed borders. We did all that. But that was just part of growing up for us. And it was not something we flaunt in people's faces. Not because of there was no social media. But so because some of the things we were doing, we're not proud of even. But we do enjoy it. Because of the society we belong with, the, there's a stigma to, towards it. But within our comfort zones, we enjoy it. It's not something. But we went on. But understanding these radical things. And I'll tell you, and with my relationship Bob Bob Babaka even now Bob, and may his soul continue to rest in peace. <laughs> One of the things was we 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 lunch in front of fact the we were we were the on the underground intelligence behind making the, 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 the Bakao people to revolt against paying for water. And again, God have it. The day that the women decided to come out, we were not in town. We were in Gunjok. We were on a picnic in Gunjok. And we just tuned in the radio and heard it. But two things we did. We did some sabotage against Nawek um, positions. I'm not going to say what, because I don't want it to be replicated. Those were them. You see, that's why when authorities deal with young people, have to understand the mindset of young people. That's, a, that's bound to happen. But it is our, our responsibility to take care of that. Nobody knew. We did something very radical against the direct infrastructure. Two, we spoke to influencer women and pushed them. You know, but one thing I, I learned about women, you let them on their own device. Some of these people, my women were my mother, sisters, and stuff like that. The day they're ready to do it, they even did what we thought they would not do. We were taking our go to KMC. They went against Jawara. When Jawara was going to the golf course, they went with their pants and everything and barricaded uh, the Bakao uh, Old Cape Road. That's, that, uh, that was 94, uh, 94 June, May, June. No, so 93 May, June, before 1994, July, uh, July, I mean, July 1994, 93. But another thing is, when that happened, we came out of the woodworks, organized communities. Now, that's where we imprinted that now the publics, and we, at that time, not me, not Bob, now, our houses have their own uh, taps and everything. We did not need the public tap. But it was a matter of fighting. And we organized ourselves, went and talked to communities, and organized them to start to rock. Because KMC and uh, were complaining that uh, the cost to pay for the bills because of the waste of water. Now, that's why we organized uh, the um, elderly women um, responsible for the public taps. Part of our activism. You see, through this environment, I went on, that's how we. I mean, created the Gumpin Studios. That's the background of Gumpin Studios. You know, and, and other radical things. I decided to go to the army. As I said, I was doing well in business. I did Forex. I was not happy about the corruption in it. I, I, I was selling cigarettes in tons. I was not happy doing it. Yes, I was not, look, I was not even buying them. I was taking boxes and boxes, placing it, and collecting money. It doesn't cost time or anything. It doesn't even cost anything. My relatives will give me boxes. And I'll go to Picton Street, pick up boxes, any, how much. And I distribute shops, I mean, I mean going. I don't even have to touch anything. And all the things. But I went to the army. Not because I want to be an officer, because I want to have a rank or anything. 
And again, that's what I said. People say, why go to the army? And yes, they did. Even my father who have served the Second World War was against it. He was a, he ended up being a, after the army, he ended up being a businessman. And he thought probably I'm a mirror image of him. But he doesn't want me to go to the army. At that time, he, he saw a potential to invest in. I'm saying it, I've never touched a penny through my investment and everything, not a penny from my father. Every penny I generated through the course of what I was doing on the site. Legitimate things. But my father said, and fullers will understand, he said that being in the military or service is Tedda Pade Fandan Yodi. You know, I mean, big boots and less pay. Now, I went to the army for what? I want to find myself better. I knew there are qualities in, in being a soldier. That patriotism. There are skill sets. I knew. And I'm interested enough when before going to the army months, a year or a year or two, no, actually, a year or two before going to the army, a friend of um a couple of mine asked me, What do you want to do? After leaving school, I said to him three things I said. And you know, these things come as predictions. I said, oh, I want to go to the army, uh, but I only want to serve one time. I want to go to war. Uh, after that, I want to be a diplomat. This is what I said. And he, he said to me, oh, you praying for Gambia to go into war? I said, no, I'm not praying for Gambia to go to war, but I want to go to where experience war. Three things. I mean, I was in probably preparing for secondary school. But again, I went to the army for these things, and I went. And Allah answered my prayers. From on this uh, onset, during going through the process, I was identified. Again, I was not identified because of my academic credit, credit, credence or anything. I was identified my comportment. Certain uh, incidents that, that happened, I mean, I call it incidents or what activities, let's let's say the activities surrounding Colonel Sao, uh, British Colonel, whose background is military intelligence for that matter, who was in charge of the British Army training team and so on, identify and start a working relationship. And that made me for who I am. And again, that's just to cut it short. Many incidents happened. My activities as again, if I, I, I have um, seen someone comment that before. Oh, because I said I was military intelligence, they see it as a grass. Someone who goes and report people. No. Because that that what the yeah, IMM made people to believe what that in what intelligence they know. Intelligence is to provide the information, uh, the ideas that are important and to find out the problems to help the 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 the, 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 the stake I mean the, the, the policy makers stakeholders in order to do their job better it is not against going against private life I mean but yeah some some aspect of it and all that there's some dirty aspect of it but as a strategic intelligence officer is completely out, out of the, the things and this in this case was about mindsets and understanding mindsets I mean dissecting things and I mean implementing strategies to control situations I mean to, to nip things in the boat you know to this this, this escalate you know some stuff like that it's basic that's what all it is and I'm um, in the process of this in fact overlapped we averted this gave me so much that I would ne have never earned from going to university. So much. And prepared me for my life. I said, I, whenever my conscience is clear in something, I go for it. I'd never regret that. By the time we went to life, the, what people don't know, and again, to show the nature of corruption, 
and the Tariq Musa. You know, when I did this Tariq Musa, I mean, we come to it. was part of, in fact, many other things that engineered what have happened. Let me give you an example. The rivalry between the Zandams and the army. Do you know one of these, what, what was it? I, I know of senior army officers who used to say, look at the Zandams. They are driving uh, pejoros. You know why the Zandam had those pejoros? Because of Tariq. Tariq, this Tariq, bright Pasala Jang, the then commander of the Gambia Zandamari, at 10% for them to buy those utility vehicles instead of uh, I mean, uh, investing in combat vehicles. You see? You see? If I come to something, I start from the first part. I did not jump on Tariq. That's how it came about. It became a rivalry. Because, yes, the Zanams are driving Pejoros. Yes. You see, that corruption, Pejoros. If the Zanams were driving Pejoros, you go and find out what, what other officers were doing. People, departments were buying vehicles for, for what? For the Padim. For, sorry, for the 10% court. Mitsubishi. But these things. The Jawara government lost course. Because people like Tariq, who came to the Gambia, a penny, which had a penny. CFRO was existence, and, and a break wall was in existence. We didn't have any, never had about this corruption. Tariq came in with this corruption of buying the, uh, the, the technocrats, or what they so-called technocrats, 10%, make sure you do things, and policy, vehicle policy just became everything, vehicle, vehicle. But in the course of tensions, if I tell you from 1989, the, the, the amount of incidents that could have happened, could it has, instabilities that I played a role in, averted with the British Army training team. Indirectly, because what happened, the British Army training team were directly advising Jawara. They are serving as his security advisors as well. And I can tell you the bulk of intelligence that goes to Jawara was coming through me, from me, sorry, uh, to, the, uh, to, 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 to the British Army training team. Colonel South, for that matter, directly. Give you it was so serious. And I, again, I'll give you a timeline. A timeline. When things were so bad, the corruption in the armed forces mirrored the corruption in the civil um, society. And they did this. And again, give you another lesson. This is when uh, many things broke down. Commercial Bank, Agriculture Development Bank, Cooperative, NTC, you know, the corruption. And, 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 uh, and, 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 and Shehu Sabali took a case, as a journalist, and lost. Jawara went to Mansa Konko, pretend that he wanted to leave, and he did not. You know, you know that we do assessment on all, all this. And we submit our reports and to, 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 to inform. The first contingent went to Liberia because hastily arranged. The, 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 the team, the team of in, um, strategic intelligence under, but we are just so small. It was hastily arranged. There was no single military intelligence from, but, but. What happened was they made up a military intelligence that they, we did not even have a military intelligence then. Let me show, tell you this. During that, listen, they made up military intelligence. I think, I, I cannot remember who they sent. Then there were certain incidents that happened. Colonel Sao invited me in his office. And he said, we, will find, we, have, we have to find a way to get you into library. I said, what do you mean? He said, you have to be part of that contingent. Now, I have to be part of the contingent, but obviously, I, my um, 
my my how to call it my the company i was in was not going to like it now he have to find a way because there were certain disturbing reports coming about the contingent in Liberia, things happening in Liberia. But again, um, the other thing was, he said to me, the NSS were really giving troubling intelligence to um, Jawara about the Gambian mercenaries in Liberia. But again, because of the lack of understanding of insurgency and counter-insurgency from the NSS, I think there's, he, he, because he reviewed, Jawara would give him files for him to review. He said, there's something lacking here. Your presence would help to look into the, 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 the this, um, presence of government mercenaries in Liberia. I, and he said, we'll find a way to do this. You see, <laughs> I tell you one thing. You see about something about intelligence. If you're not careful, you think it's like marabout. I mean, spiritual marabout. No, it's just strategy. And you know, depends the people you deal with as well. And the Gambia command, we are so gullible for me. You see, because especially if you know our people, if they deal with the white skin, it's a different thing. And colorism. And if I tell you about colorism. I find out, what I later find out, that all the people I know, a few people there, some people didn't even know they were being used as strategic intelligence. The people I know who wear strategic intelligence on the back, they were all light skinned for a reason, for another day, colony. But because of this, I mean, complex, Colonel South proposed something they definitely they never because Colonel South proposed it it had to happen it wasn't a question that or oh, they need a motor section now Colonel South said that in, in, in going to Liberia we need to embed a more motor section in this contingent and that motor section if they go will find a way to attach them to the Ghanaian contingent so that they will have a practical knowledge of uh, operating motors. <laughs> no, thinking about it, how ridiculous that idea was. That they bought it. One, how can you determine the Gambian Gan Ghanians would ac accept that arrangement? Two, it might. But two, what does it make that you are a man, organize a section of people who have never seen a motor, who never use a motor, in order to go and served within a conflict situation to be attached to a, a, a motor company or platinum or whatever it is. But they bought it. That's how my section, people who were in Liberia, they don't know, that's how I came to Liberia with, with a section. Two things happened. One, I was, I was refused promotion because some uh, uh, incident I have with an uh, adjutant I told him off for whatever he wanted to try. Uh, to at that time, before going to Liberia, Colonel Sal in fact proposed that I will be sent here to have a motor training, arms tra training, and especially on motors. Why on motors? You see, at that time, the assessments and everything, the that's when it came to say that we need. Um, a very effective fighting force because of the insurgency in Casablanca and likely insurgency coming from far, uh, 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 fallout from from Liberia civilian coming to us. This is what what informed it that they started to uh, get the Chinese to bring mortars. I mean these things and um, heavy, heavy weapons, RPGs. That's by ninety four the uh, uh, the army was equipped with all this. But there was this thing here. But again, let's just go back. I went to Liberia pretext of mortar. When I get there, I have already have my brief. I, I played my thing and obviously control situation. I now became um um and like special ops supporting companies covering this thing going on um I mean escorts of VIPs 
then I was free and do things I do. But saying it, but and many things happened in Liberia and what we did. But coming back, it was so bad. Now you see, the politicians have it, it, the country was just wrecked. Then by that time, Colonel Sir, I came back, my final report and my final sitting with Colonel Sir, and I said to him this: I am really frustrated, and I have. I don't want to get involved. He said, in what? And I said to him, sir, it's going to happen. I said, there's nothing you guys can do. And there's nothing we can do. I said, the military will take over. And he turned around and said to me, I know. But unfortunately, as you said, there's nothing we can do. Because we are leaving. Colonel Sao said to me because the British Army came, he said, the government is not listening. Sheikh Sabali is taking over everything. Jawara is not accessible anymore to them. He said this to me personally. That's why I said there's nothing been, I mean, I mean nothing came through that uh, so-called um, TRRC. Because of the coup, then nothing came out. And it's not that I'm not volunteer to go, go out there, but for one reason, they don't want me there. He said to me that nothing can be done. And they were leaving before it even became official. And I said, hence you're leaving. I said, the only thing that kept me here was what I was doing with you. But I don't see me, myself serving as a mercenary because that's why I said I would serve as a mercenary if I was the normal Gambian soldier because that's all it is. I was there, uh, trained and everything, and waiting to do something illegal. That's how I see it. The only thing keeping me then was this, that I can see impacting. And then I decided that I'm going to leave. <laughs> because, you know, this time, by this time, a lot of things have happened. Down there I have left because under controversy and other things. And then the second demonstration happened. By the second time the second demonstration happened, I've already implemented my strategy to agitate to be court martial. I wanted to be court martial. I did not take the easy route of trying uh, going for a medical and medically discharge. No, I want to be, be a whistleblower to be court martial so that I can come out and alert Gambians that we are at a dangerous space with this army and this country. And if we don't do anything, this army is going to take over. Nineteen ninety, April, the day. The soldiers left uh, the barracks, went to Denton Bridge, and they were stopped. By that time, two weeks I've not reported, because I went to deliberate all, so that I'll be taken to, um, I mean, um, I mean, charge for all. Then I'll push, um, to, to 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 trigger that I'm not gonna serve. And one thing is, I'll be caught myself because I'll be breach of contract. Two weeks. <clears throat> The day I was returning, that was the day these uh, soldiers have gone to, uh, I mean, demonstrate, trying to get to uh, the state house. And they were not even a lance couple among them. They were all uh, private soldiers. And most, most of these people served with me in Liberia. And again, the, the reason is, in Liberia, there was kind of a demonstration that was to happen. And I averted that demonstration and coming out strategically doing certain things and been and seen as a spokesperson, leave it that way. But when I got to the um, barracks, Union you know, barracks, when I was even going to Union you know, barracks, to Sarah people are looking at me because I was in uniform. I was wondering, what the heck? Come on, I've never seen this attention. Something must have been going on, but I didn't know that these guys are working on. The minute I got to Union you know, barracks, got off, it's an, an officer ran to me. And said, thank God you're not part of it. I said, part of what? He said, oh, the your boys. I said, which boys? Oh, most of this, uh, named the names that they demonstrated. I said, where are they? He said, oh, they've been stopped at the Denton Bridge by the gendarmes. And I said to him, you believe that? If I was part of anything, you think I'll be in a demonstration where I will be going to be stopped at the bridge? I think, I said to him, you believe that? I said, I haven't been involved. I hung around that day, they didn't have time for me, I went home. Say a few days come back, I was arrested, locked up, 
and processed. And I went, I think it was Captain, uh, this deputy, this Ndundu Cham. I said, look, <laughs> I, I want my case. No, I meant to be reviewed by the commander in chief. I, I refused to say anything. And he didn't have a choice. He forwarded it. I went, the minute I got there, they know that they understand what I'm agitated. I was discharged that day. I walked in, looked at my files, looked at me. It was Major Mobo He said to me, I know what you want, but I'm not going to give it to you. And discharged. And I left. But I knew what, what I wanted to do. And 1994 was not a surprise, and the success wasn't a surprise, because of the politicians did not listen to the people they needed to listen to. But again, my contributions, again going to Liberia, benefits of intelligence on Gambian mercenaries. 1994, November. Another strategic intelligence officer was called Alfaba. I'm calling his name because he's no more. Alfaba was another but but B8 but but British Army training team. Alfaba took over from me. In Liberia, I hand over to Alfaba. I hand over my assets to Alfaba. And Alfaba was close to Yemen. When the coup happened, Alfaba came to me. And I warned him, be careful. Be careful. Be careful of Germany. But be careful within this. I said it does where how it's sad it doesn't end up. He she said, Oh, he assured me, oh I'm so love, Jamie so old this thing. I mean Jamie doesn't even go out without me praying for him and all those things. I said, I know. But be careful. And he she said to me, Oh Jamie wanna speak to you. I said to him, No. Hell no. He said, Why? I said, I'm not. I said, I have my reasons. I don't want anything close to him. He insists and said that he would arrange for me, Jamie would, if I'm not going to sit with Jamie, he would arrange for me to sit with one of his guys. I said, yeah, that can be done. He arranged for me and Baba Job to sit. Well, I sat with Baba Job and Baba Job went on, went on, went on, went on, went on, went on. That he doesn't even have a clue of what they wanted. I gave Baba Job advice to stabilize. And I introduced, I said to Baba Job, Musa Suso. I never spoke to Musa Suso personally, but I know his qualities. Then I said, We're going to speak to Musa Suso on that. He will be able to help you use Musa Susu, this, 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 this. That's how the AFPRC first have a meeting in Sukuta to Musa Susu. And that's how Musa Susu uh, got this power. He did, 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 did not even know. I've never spoken to Musa Susu since we left the army. He might not even, even remember me in the army. He might not even remember me at Sunning Beach. But that's what happened. Alpha Ba went on again. And said to me, Gambia is very well worried about what? And he said, Gambian mercenaries in Liberia. And I, he said, I told Gambia that you were the expert in this. You hand over to me, but what you knew and you can find out, I can't. Alpha but pressed, pressed me. And I said to him, for the sake of national security. And he said, yeah, I don't, we know if these people strike here, and sudden insurgency, it will be very bad. I said, yeah. I will go there. I will, I said, I will update and I will be, give a report. I will do recommendations on what can be done to mitigate any of this. Gambian mercenaries committed. I went there, came and I went to Liberia in December, December 20, uh, December 1994, two weeks. I was not paid a penny. $15,000, not even expense. That was the cost of the air ticket, ADC airline. I $15,000, not even dollars. I didn't want a pen. I hold on to my business and everything, my expenses in library and everything, I took care of. Just to know that I will not benefit. 
from anything else. And I'm not doing it for recomm recommendations or anything. I went. I went to Liberia two weeks. Where I first hosted that night, I arranged. Where I got hosted next, I arranged. That was Lieutenant Sane. Pa Sane is in America. He's a witness. And as close as I was with Pasane, I spent my two weeks Pasane did not know why I was in Liberia. If I want to keep something, I keep it. I only say things in need to know basis. Two weeks. Partially, in fact, he hosted me partially because most of the time I am out of the ju jurisdiction of, of, of there because the people I need to meet. Two weeks, I took a risk. So, there's a guy called Pure. He was a Zandam. When we were in Liberia, a guy called Ture, uh, Zandam. Ture and Balo, the former Baro uh, cousin, uh, Abai Mambalo, who was interior minister. I was at Seninyai. I was with them in Liberia. And Ture used to be very inquisitive. Ture, they were intelligence. And Ture, this guy Ture, he, he, he's from, I forgot the, the symbol, I know he was living in La, um, Serukunda, and um, he did attend attend high school or something in La, in Nigeria this morning. He was light-skinned. Ture used to uh, think, and I once took Ture in a mission. And that day, we had an experience. And unfortunately, when Ture came back, he became um, unstable. That's how dangerous you know, some of these missions were. I went. I said, listen, and I collaborated, came back, wrote my report, wrote my, 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 my recommendations, and exactly what I said happened. When, when I had that Kukoi half attacked through, um, and, uh, through um, Farafeno. Farafeno was one, Kodang was two, uh, Kato was three. These are the three I, 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 I identify, point of entrance, and the metal, uh, the metal they're going to use. It's very similar insurgency to what uh, to what Charles Taylor did to start his insurgency. Very similar. That is what they wanted to do. But again, I did that. Then the pressure came. Now, kind of a more pressure trying to get me all and with all these promises. I said no. I don't want to. I don't want to. Then the death of Kurosi say, I said no. Now, if I stay in this country, for what I know, and Jamie knows how much I know, and refusing to work for him, or work with him, I'll be a dead man walking. I left. I did not leave to run. And one thing I did, I came in this country, I have never seek asylum. That's, that was part of my principle. I never seek asylum to determine and to believe that I did not run. I never. I could have. In those days, asylum was like this. Easiest. I took a very hard route. Hard route. Terrorized myself. Never. Based on my principles that I'm not running. Again, God have it, I got involved. By accident, by design, by God, I got, I mean, access my skill set, little I have, into contract um, um, intelligence. And I, I learned a lot to the extent of I was so confident. That's when I came out with every, got into a lot of things prior to coming out. I took so much risk when I was involved in what I was involved with. Talking to people I was talking to. I refused many advances. I have my weaknesses. CDC said today the candidate for the crown would be my weakness. I sat with people, very influential, have money, have this is. I've never allowed even if a coffee was bought for me, I paid for their coffee too. I've never taken a penny, a dime from any Gambian or any individual. 
If anyone have given, have given to a cause I believe in. To today, Gambians are gifting me and I'm not accepting it. It's going, I am identifying people that needs it, charities that needs it, and they are supporting them. To today. I, that's why people say, I know how generous Gambians are. I know how committed Gambians are. That's why I don't buy that narrative. Gambians are wicked, they involve abuse. No, because I know behind the scenes. I have seen the sacrifice Gambians have done behind the scenes and what you Gambians have seen. How many people died in prison and everything. But no, they will turn, some will turn around to say, advice will say, yeah, one thing, all those meetings, many people will have jumped, jumped on because of the, um, at that time, how much they wanted to see Gambia out. For one, anything I do, I am very cautious what I get myself into. I always look at the impact to so see the damage it might cost if it fail. I don't want to be in anything to advance as individuals or any other thing. I tell you what happened is, sorry guys, this is going to take a little bit to, to get to in presence, but this is necessary because probably many people didn't know because it's possible. It's my character here being attacked. And um, I can tell you, when one, just before uh, Amadou Samba was citizen arrest in, in, in Senegal, I was in Senegal, before day, I mean, a month or two before. I was meeting people that the likely chance of Germany knowing, it was. Because when you, Jamel was well informed and we had penetration. And for the arrest, at citizen arrest, these people did to Armando Samba, prove my point. Because they even jumped. I'm, I'm a second judge and they even jumped. They didn't even know how much Armando was involved. They could, if they knew what they said, they, they could have left things to unroll. Why do you think Armando don't want to live in Gambia? Armando know how much is he is involved with Gambia. And other people he offended, part of the German clique. I sat with groups, and one of them, I'll say it here, came from the French embassy in Senegal, a retired colonel, sat in that group. For a regime change in the government, I refuse. I refuse. Part of my mission was strategizing. Part of my mission was to identify the Gambia they were in still. I refuse. Because I know that it could be worse than what Jamaica was doing. Ah, yes. Don't think that uh, worse than Jamaica cannot happen. It can. Depending on the circumstances we create. And the, the time, geopolitical realities. I refuse at that time. Because the people they were involved with as well. The people there were involved with as well. But I listened to them. I flew to Senegal. I hosted myself. The only two nights I was hosted, and it, that was not even hosted. I happened to spend late. It was late. And the person was a, a fa um, not family, but he's, technically he's the guy who introduced me. He was a Gambian. He was a Gambian who very senior in the mercenary business, very senior, who, who introduced me to this group. And I was in this apartment um, for two nights for, I mean, ongoing this thing, it was so late, I didn't want to travel out to this thing. That's only two nights I can say that I've been, I've received that thing and he's like family. I would not have even trusted anybody else to, to spend night with anyway. I am very cautious what I did. I knew what they wanted and everything else. But I knew what they wanted to do, what the risk in that as well. But it opened my eyes too. From that meeting, I went back to Gambia. I was not scared. Because I went back to even um, 
find i mean to 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 to, to confirm some of the f facts i mean real stuff they told me and i found that to be real that's to deal with the drug trade how jammer was involved and these people do you know who they were drug cartels um linked with uh, angola and again you see when the sisdg was been uh, um, at the TRC with SFR. SFR started to talk about that angle, but SFR, because SFR did not have the intelligence on that. He could not hold him. And guess what? Remember the SISDG was stationed in Dakar. And um, he said certain things about the airport, infrastructure, certain infrastructure that these people and so on. I went and it was a fun. I did not I was not tempted. If I was ambitious to for myself or wanted money or wanted anything else, I would have jumped in it. But there were a lot of others. I knew a lot of other things were going on. A lot of other things were going on in Dakar. I came back. I was so worried. I said, now I have to implement a strategy. Oye Jalo is still alive. May Allah give him um, longitude and give him um, better health. He's still alive. I did not approach. I'll tell you one thing there's no person within the struggle said that Ben Swana came and approached me. If I even need your expertise, I'll make sure you come. If I approach you, if anyone said approach, it's just mere of thing. But anything serious, I am, I'm, I'm a well trained intel I don't I don't compromise. On even my metallurgy. I make sure you come to me. That's what OJ is a family. And I'll tell you one thing I don't mix family with politics or anything. I, I've never. OJ been minister before, Gawara, OJ, these things. We are related in many ways. I'll tell you, interrelated in many ways. In this, even in the struggle until that time. Until that time. I was so worried. Then I had to talk to him. For many reasons, I said to him, we have to be very careful. What I saw in Dakar, the competing forces in Dakar, I said, if we are not careful, one thing Jemmy is doing, he's having control. If these people come in, we'll be out of control. And we'll just dip into a civil war. OJ is alive. Almost, I was spending many time on the phone with OJ, or when he's in England, we spending time. It was to the extent there's a picture, and one day someone will bring that picture to say that I was PPP. But Siaka Sonko, the Interior Minister Siaka Sonko, can bear me witness. I have sat with their meetings, and I strategize with with them, and I said to them, "Look, I am not." I cannot join any political party. And I said, for the reason as well, I said, what I am into, which I cannot tell you, if I ever join a political party and it's CIA, you may find out, I said, your party leaders would, would suffer. I said, let me just leave it like this. And I, I don't mind contributing. I contributed. Why? For the greater good. PPP was not in existence, I'll tell you that. It was Oye Jaro. I mean, other sympathetic people, I don't even call PPP guys, but they were loyal to OJ. PPP was just OJ John. A penny they don't have. But with OJ's influence, his rich empathy with other people and so on, that's what happened. And go and look at the timeline. Go and look at the timeline. 2014. 2015, 2016. This first time you start to hear even a political rally in uh, uh, PPP having a political rally. Because OJ was needed, instrumental in my thinking of making so we can have that leadership, which was essential. It was my first task to, to try to help to create. To intelligentsia, to bring this thing. There's so many things that happened, we can go to, to that. We that was so bad. 30th December came. I don't want to go into that. That's another day.
But there's so many reasons. Before 30th December, again, I, I was in the army. And again, um, before that, okay, then I'm on the summer, when after there's, there's I'm on the summer, there was a meeting we had with the uh, Senegambia, uh, I forgot the group name, uh, James uh, Bahom, Chongan, and uh, Koto Ablai Joe. You know, they, 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 they listen, you know, they had this meeting in, um, in, um, at, uh, Kensington, in, in, uh, Kentistan, in London. I went to the meeting. I was in the company's OJ, James Barham, and others. And I spoke at that meeting. CDCC was there. He recorded that meeting, and that meeting was transmitted at, um, to Freedom. And, um, it was about bringing, again, the effort to bring out a leadership and I remember basically what I said to them that we have to have a strategy in order to bring out the leadership we cannot just say that we have to come together come together no there must be strategy and this is we have to do this do that I gave that that's what my position was then 2015 I ha again need to tie up certain knots before things roll out, I have to go. I went. And I saw what I've seen. Tidy knots. Lessons learned from 30th December and other things became handy. And that's why people don't understand the impact that the December have in the army. I know the, what impact it has. Let's again continue to pray for all those heroes. If the Gambians would sacrifice, those people sacrifice that much. Why do you think that Ben Swara was scared of a legal action in the United Kingdom? Or anyway. Those people sacrifice. And that's Sankara one of the cause of the failure of that operation. We'll come to that another day. Now we're done. Then, that's, through my experience in this, we went through everything else. The Kalamar Revolution came in and everything, pam, 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 which I was not even aware of what was happening. I just sat at a, I was at a training, a meeting, um, a training conference. I, my, well, where are you? Do you not hear? I said, no, I did not. I left, came back, and I gained radio. And they got involved on other things, other things. Until 2016, what happened? Many other things happened. But again, to say this, I cultivated relationship with PUIS through, through certain listening. I cultivated relationship with, with um, UDP through other means. Oji Jalo was the one who who I physically listen, but again through all that, then the impasse came. Through the impasse, people have been seeing certain things in the open. But I'll tell you, when we give you what actually happened behind the scenes, you'll be surprised. And then Gambians would really respect what diaspora have contributed. I can tell Billahi Wallahi Taala, without the diaspora, Gambia would have been there today, even after 2016 election. And if Gambians even think that Alaji Alu Mamanja was just a honest person, I am in Ramadan. I am fasting in Ramadan. If you even think that Alaji Mamanja was only a honest person to do what he did, that's not true. There's so many that happen based on intelligence. That's why Yaya people saying that, oh, they say uh, they, 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 they uh, the, the international community, you know, it wasn't. No, until and we use the inter international community to have the right verdict, not to steal the elections. If you think Yaya just is deposed, but again, don't forget, with Elijah Muhammad, I said, uh, um, he, I'm trying to find a video where he was with. Um, the guy uh, Malik Jones, Ma is this Malik Jones? The guy with, that do the interview with Barrow. When he said himself, if the APRC bureau was not burned down, yeah, I would have won the elections. You think Alaji Mamanjai did not know about the ele election fraud uh, going on? He was part of it. 
but everything you have a way to handle. That's why I said, I don't, I can walk with someone this is but to a limit, to achieve something out of it. We celebrated him, yes, because I mean, he delivered end of the day, because we created an environment for him to be able to do it, with protection. What we do is not, we don't even come out to say it. But Barrow today would beat his chest, thinking that Mara was helping, thinking that he have sacrificed other things, he thinking that other things. No, there are so many committed people. So many committed people. If people wanted that uh, to be a president, come may what, some of us would have been involved in other things. CDC say would bear me witness. Propose for me for, to be an interim president for two years. I uh, see the, 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 the person, the financier for sp spoke to CD. I'll say this here, I've said it before. And CD said that Ben is not into that, which I respect. He knew. He said, Ben is not into that. And the guy said, No, because the guy always spoke to me, knew how much. I was connected and what's what what is possible and he said he said no let me just speak to him again and the guy said okay. I said Sidi, let him come and the guy came and pitched himself pitch 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 I said sorry and said sorry I'm not interested in that if you can support in this and what I mean in this how Gambians come. I always supported this idea of Gambians coming to this, determine their leader. This model that we end up having, that the politician play their part, the Gambian people play their part, Jasper play their part, every, many people play their part. Some people lost their lives, some people went to prison and other things. That's what I believe in. But not to one part. Many plots that went into it came through me, I said no. And still that's my principle. I'm not doing it for myself. And I'm not going any illegal way in order to put one person in, in this thing and, and lose control over things. I'm too smart for that. I don't follow what I can get from it. But some of the people today coming out to say that, let, let me take into trial, thinking that uh, that's, a, that's something, they have trial, that's what they think. They only follow a government, they can follow, they will follow any government. Because they've had full Yaya before. They don't follow any government. They don't care. So that they can have a luxury lifestyle. If we want a luxury, our talent can give us that. It's fortunate for us. This is my way of worshipping. This, I tell you that, my performance in this is not how much wither I do, how much salatu fati I do, how much uh, rakas I do. No, I believe in what I do for society. Those things are the fundamental pillars, yes. But these are my way of my way of life. Would, uh, is what determines. I, just to show you an example again, why is Alaji Al 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 still insisting, even illegally staying in office? I'm not disrespectful to him. As I said again, he's an elderly person. Again, I am connected in marriage to him because I have to. I happen to marry into a big family, we are connected to many ways. It's not, it's, even being an elderly person for that matter, it's difficult to talk about these things in a way people think is disrespectful. But this is about national concern. Yes, it's relevant here because when Sankara said, and I'll play that because of uh, the elections. Yes, that I said that the elections were illegal. I'll come to that. Baro knows that. <laughs> Baro knows that. He is insisting to stay. For what? Over 80 years, even if you are 40 year old, year old, you serve your time. Why are you insisting? As if no other government can do your job. That tells you something. And until our elections are regulated, our democracy cannot grow and our stability will be in question. I, we, it went on to what we have in the process. We went through the um, impasse. 
at times even our contributions or our connections. And if I tell you how much sacrifice, I don't like to, because I know people who sacrifice far more than me because they've sacrificed their life. For example of that, the gallant six young soldiers who were written Jame uh, apparat apparatus to, to stand up to eliminate 300,000 motor cars. And still Gambians who want to tell you, oh, that, that was not real. When the IC chairman have acknowledged, when Jame have acknowledged it. Again, I can remember when I went to spoke to certain people which need to know that 300,000 voter cards are involved in this elections. Until we manage to locate this and get rid of it out of the uh, circulation, we'll be in trouble. We'll never take them out. Then I only supported going to elections because I knew what we had. And people don't know which recently someone have confirmed that intelligence on me. Few days before elections, Adam Abara was to be assassinated because Jamme, Jamme suspected that something was not right, but he did not cannot put his hands on it. Yeah. Baro knows. If 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 anybody don't know Ben Suare, Baro knows me more than anyone else. I'll tell you that, not based on me meeting him, I never met him or anything, because of the amount of dossiers the Senegal is put on his table. Amount of dossiers or things that he was told him. People respected. I never appealed to those people to t tell Baro what I did or not, because I did not. I sat for seven years not going to Gambia. I didn't, I didn't need to. I never spoke to anyone. Oye Jalo became a minister. Hussein Dabo became a vice president and all these people I could have reached. I've never attempted. My hands are here. I've never attempted. Then I just did what I did for things to work. Why would I have something against Adam about to lie about, about him? Why would I need to? We've proved this. We, at times you don't know, to the extent of the The American intelligence, the CIA, getting contacting us at the latter minute to ask us to hold back. Everything was under control. That's why I said, if you think that Jamme left because of the threat of economic alone, if you think that Jamme left, or uh, IC declared the elections because of Allah Mamadi's bravery alone, and again. Oje Jalo is alive. A night, on a Thursday night, I received a call. I've got the date and everything. That night, within hours, unfortunately, someone I trusted to get something they went and told, uh, uh, went and asked, instead of told, uh, what's his name? Alaji, um, Esa Bukasi. And Esa Bukasi ran with his loud mouth and talked about it. Oh, oh the, 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 there's, a, there's a ship going to uh, between Mauritania and Gambia. That was monitored by the CIA. He didn't know. Someone, because I needed something from this person, I needed to tell him a little bit. He told me a little bit as I took that and exaggerated. And that have caused a damage on one th what we wanted on Jamie. Because if Jamie would not have <laughs> just leave. The, 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 the next day, Ibaba Chongan is alive here. Minifi, Angante, people know him. Let him ask. He was called. In his office to go and answer to the American embassy. He sat with an American embassy officer who asked him to us to take our foot off the pedal. Everything is under control. To reassure us. Because by that time, 
how much we infiltrated, how much the grip we had. Smartly, Ibrahim Chogan said to the uh, American gentleman, if you, I mean, will allow me, there's a senior member of the opposition in the UK at that time. Then OG Jalo is here for medical in Birmingham. If you hear me, let me call him and you speak to him to reassure him of this. And the guy, gentleman agreed. Chongan placed the call to um, OJ Jalo and OJ Jalo spoke to Chongan to reassure him of that things would be okay. But Jammy would leave without a fight. And I, 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 that's how all the, all the things I mean, roll out. But to say all this, it's to tell you again how much care was taken. And if I wanted to be wealthy, famous or anything, I would have jumped on and explained certain things or do certain things about what have and we, we have impacted. I am saying me, 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 because I serve as an operational, let's say the operational directive architect of most of the strategies and so on, but I had people. But I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> to tell you that, the caution, the care, professionalism, everything we do, Senegal, 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 had offered you see, that's why when I come out to make allegations against Senegalese government, I have my evidence. I don't make allegations. You know, if it is probable, I say probable is. I have my evidence. And I have worked professionally, and people that work with me and work with them know this. I always tell, I always remind them our national interests. I always remind them, yeah, yeah, yeah we will leave and we'll have to deal with this. I always remember that. I've never been compromised. Thank God for the experience I have from here. Not only what I was taught by, by the British Army training team, but what I have from here. Understanding espionage. Understanding geopolitics. I am not going to say exactly what it was, what they, why they offered me money. But it was presented as any operational funds you need. And I tell you, through the course of everything we do, we did. Senegal have never given us a dime. But for this thing, they approached me, knowing, identified me as the operational guy, approached me to say that they can fly me into Dakar and we discuss this and any operational funds I need will be given to me. But if I do that, Jammeh will go. I know that. And people who have followed me when I came on board, I said, I said, and I mean, in many people would, I said that Jamie was going to go this way. I have my reasons. I have my belief. It was not Marabuism or anything. That belief I had. Ni or na, I have. Senegal have never given nothing, and they wanted me to say, oh, Jamie will go. Because they know how many Gambians want Jamie to go. And they have used this to their advantage. I said to them, when I reviewed it, I did not even forward the suggestion to anybody. Now, right, I went and looked into it, what it meant. I said, now, right. You know what? If I have acted on great wealth to be impressed, Jamie would have gone, but we would have been finished. Our sovereignty would have been finished. That's all I'm going to say. This was very critical. They are not stupid. They have never contributed a time. We have emptied our savings. We have masked up our credit cards. We have involved certain people. People that know, no. That's why I said, not to not to pay my rent, not to pay my bills. No, no, never. But the extra minutes I have savings, we've gone to it. And some people few people came in and it, mm, let me put this an infrastructure I, I I what I mean about infrastructure you know intelligence you know some people built I was not part of that 
someone invested heavily in that. And when I came, I used part of that infrastructure. But for what I was directly involved with, I'll tell you, most of it was done by a few, few of us. Our finances, few of us. Myself, Chongan, and other people. But again, um, the infrastructure that that uh, these people inherited, we used. I mean, assets and other things. Because this takes a lot of finances to do and to implement. But what I'm saying is, why did I say about the Senegalese thing? After, okay, when this, when um, Barrow was evacuated to Dakar, I was invited again by two entities, the state capturers, business people. Today, I am going against. Bis business people I'm going against. Bro. I'm, I'm, I'm live on uh, Facebook. Okay. They invited me. Sumarka Nua. At that time, they, you know, they say, they, 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 they know of my in influence. But they did not know of my influence would have nothing to, I don't want anything extra. They said to Sumarka Nua, Dakar, Yepanke, healthy. Now they wanted to use me as a leverage in order to access. <laughs> and if you know how dangerous some of these people are, they use many methods. They use their women to entice you to whatever. Hey, you all Dakar, live in the in them Dakar, show them a Dakar, my picture. They tried everything. I did not move an inch. State captures. The Senegalese themselves. Me, yo, can I I refuse. For good reasons. But I did not go in present, uh, as in passing, but again, intel. I use assets to monitor, to these things, and go and visit my uh, videotapes. It's when Dakar, Barob was in Dakar, I started to. I even at times I caution because the fragility of the government. But at times I need to say it as it is. Be careful. Be careful. When Masani Kinte was trying to start it to be unveiled, I said no. I was called a tribalist, I was called everything. I had my reasons. The state captures. I knew in Dakar that Barob have disappointed. I said it, people were, went against me. People thought that they are in control. But worst, Senegalese intelligence turned to turn around a dossier on me and told Barrow how dangerous I am for them. No, against their, uh, against anything, but not dangerous to, for my national interest, no. And I know they, God knows what else they put in there. But in this Ramadan, I can swear that my dangerousness, my gift from God, I have never used my intelligence, background, or anything to benefit personally or to damage anyone or to, to kill anyone. And I can tell you that. If we wanted certain people to be eliminated then for Jammy to go or Jammy himself, we could have done. I refuse. I refuse. I have evidence I prove I could have. But that was not a solution. Jammy was not our problem. I mean, it was a system. Taking Jammy was not at certain things you do it, you even cause more problems. We need to manage it, and that's what I think. If I would not have done certain things to Jamie himself, if now I would not have done anybody else, why would I? And I can tell you, which I never tell people, I am a direct victim of them. People don't know. I, would, uh, I don't go out saying it. My first cousin, Ibrahim Osman, still could not, would not be found. 
and very highly suspicious that because every evidence we have point to Jannah. See, we can find it. But that doesn't mean you bitter to the extent of doing something that brought them. I only would not even want to cont contemplate that there's always a means to do certain other things. Was getting into the head of Jamie. To the extent of when Jai Jamie came out to say that, where is the 300,000 voter cards? Then some of, some of the quotas were just asking, Sumara Katakan only had 300,000 voter cards. That's why I said, it's Baro thing that I, I uh, if anybody thinks, thinks that I make allegations, yes, it might surprise people. I know that. People, even people I work with, they, Sumarakan or Sumawai, how do you know this? Because it's things that they think that the only people present would know. And they don't think of any other way, me who did, was not present will know. That's why, what intelligence is about. Some people think it's um, very beautiful. No, it's about intelligence. The Senegalese wrote a dossier warning. That's why I said the way but it's many whatever this is to this sense. Because of what? The Senegalese believe that and know that if I borrow had my uh, distance, I, I would have prevented a lot of things they didn't go. They know that I understand how intelligence work. I understand what they do, how they do it. I'll give you an example. When I give you an example because I never tell them how I do things. I do things and they do things because I, I mean, these things have to look at. But I, whenever they do things, I'll, I'll tell them that this is what you did. I beat them to it. They had moles in um, with Jam they had some mole within Jamaica. And Alaji Sisi, this Alaji Sisi was one of them. <laughs> they have an infrastructure of intelligence around Jamaica. And the guy got an information. The, this Senegalese intelligence got an information. And he came to me with the information. And I said to him, this person gave you the information. He said, man, no Bahamut. He was shocked that I, I did not. I said, this person gave you the intel. When Saul Baji was dealing with Senegalese intelligence, Umpamendi was dealing with Senegalese intelligence. Most of them, I, 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 I turned out and politicians. Whatever I told him, I said, you think Saul Baji will ever betray Jamie and come and walk I mean, I said, anything Saul Baji tells you, Jamie is listening. And they find out, I mean, they listen. And I, I even the mole, they dare themselves. I said, you think yeah, Jamie don't have, I mean, you, you know that. That's why, again, I've never volunteered. And that's why, again, I've involved with them to the extent I've never had any of my assets compromised in the army or anywhere else. Because Senegal don't even know who I deal with, really, apart from the people who are safe, uh, jurisdictions, and they know each other. But none, none of my assets until those people needed protection within Senegal. The case of Usman, uh, Usman Sonko, the, I mean, the former interior minister. And what happened of to get him out of the system in order. You see, there's so many things. They went to Barrow and make all these things. But I'll tell you one thing. If Barrow was meant for good, Barrow would have known that's a lie. But what they did is to put fear in Barrow of how dangerous I am. I am not dangerous. I would not dangerous because I wouldn't do anything selfish, especially for nation. I'm too decent for that. But I know of two people, and how I do, how do I know about this? I'll tell you. Some of these things comes from Barrow's own mouth. A friend of mine said to me that because he, that my friend of mine is a friend to someone. At the beginning, you see, Barrow was the most. Barrow is the most lucky person to be a president. When the uh, um, when he came into this thing, there were so many opportunities, obviously around, but there were so many dignified guardians with experience who does, did not want a job from him, but just wanted to advise him. 
And I tell you that the government will be sucked. I'm not going to name the persons because, I mean, I uh, don't want to bring it into controversy. But Barrow was even advised and appointed as his um, executive advisor, one of the most prominent experienced Gambians in, in governance from UND who have retired from the UNDP. And I tell you, if that person was with Barrow, Barrow would have done everything right. Guess what? To the extent of that person being notified and everything that person had agreeing that that letter be prepared, the, the mafia asked Barrow to tear that up. They tear that up. But again, this person went to speak to Barrow. And he brought out, I swear to the to the Quran here, Ramadan, I've I've never I've never du during that time to now. The only time I remember probably speaking to that person, which he will not remember, we used to meet up, we, 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 miss, we, we used to meet at a joint in Bacau called Kumbas, a place we used to meet up, probably with my half. I cannot remember that, not with my two open conversations and stuff, stuff like that with my half entirely. This person um, that spoke to Bao, and apparently he raised certain things, he said to Bao, not about appointment, he said to Barrow, uh, if you have to listen to any person about uh, intelligence, would be this chap, Suleiman Benzman. And Barrow said to this person, you see, this is very dangerous, that's why people that talk to, Barrow said to this person and reveal a name, or, or no, sorry, a description of the per another person for me to know who the person is. And Barrow said to him, yeah, wow, they're going to, this is another very senior Gambian. But you think, people think Barrow is stupid? No, Barrow is corny. It's like a, he thinks like a criminal. He might act as a buffoon. He does act as a buffoon. But there is something corny about him. He did not volunteer to these people that, oh, but I have a dossier on him. I'll tell you how I know about the dossier. But he said to himself, oh, yes. He approved of that advice because he said, another person. And he, I don't want to, he called out this person um, profession. I see, just to show, hey, I'm not called Kumako Watam, Koko Lila Wansa, Koko Tamo Hamali Ali Ali Ali. Fine. Then after, obviously, from the thing came out. Then I asked. Another one of his people around him, this so-called big people around him, said to me, Monday Barrow of Namani, Lafa Amdosia on you. For my advice, that will be little enough to regal mom. But again, this is this is just to show what my background is, my experience is. I mean, as I said, this is not going to talk about the legal, but it's just going to give you the political uh, surrounding. Because again, People who are generally in fear, don't fear. When I was involved in this, when I'm involved in this, as I said, this is a natural thing to me from a child getting uh, into activism to where I am. I've taken more risk than anything else. My life could have been there. And that was a sacrifice I saw need to take. Thank God it did not happen. As I said, when I was dealing with certain people going back in and out, go back to Dakar, Gambia, I mean, and, I mean uh, to Again, I have people that knew that my last trip to Bugambia even was really controversial. And people said, don't go, don't go. And when I was in Gambia, people, I mean, at certain, certain circumstances, in fact, uh, I can see people were fooling. But that did not stop us. Then illegal threat should not. And again, to say that, I am confident of what I do, what I say, and I have a track record of that. That's not one thing. I've ever raised that did not come to be uh, been vindicated, as I said about Barton before. And that who these things and have vindicated. About elections, the example is here. Why would they want to insist on Aladdi Muhammad Jaisabi? That's another example of this. But for the people who uh, just see their interests of living in a big house and all we could have done that 
But that's not my motivation. We don't fight involved because what we get from it. And we pray to God that we are not associated. And we never pray to God, never be associated with anything that that is of that world. Our experience gives me, my experience gives me the means to get this information and so on. And many things we have averted. As I said, working in the force of purpose, I've averted a lot through my intelligence. And my, my predictions came out. When Jamie came, what I advised all the senior officers that this is, this is the outcome, this is where we are going to go with this. And when I saw the danger, I left. I never ran away. When the time, when I equipped myself ready, prepare for it, because these things you have to be. I came out. And from day one, I came out and I said, this is my Jamie will come. I sacrificed and other people sacrificed, people died, and young people did so much for this battle to be there. Why would we have hateful battle? Job seekers? Stupid. But for what? Why would I have hate for these Yambian business people? People who I'm not related to. Why would I have hate for anybody for that matter? Who is that important for me to hate? But we have so-called influencers within us that just go for their interests would want to worry that that's i'm just i'm not addressing them i'm addressing the people that are gullible or not understanding that follows them and just uh um um what i mean comment on or i mean on their status or do that because they don't know that's the worst thing that can happen one thing is to commit a crime the other is to influence other people to commit commission that kind of thing thank god um now, what I want Gambians to think about, to address this political side of things. What is new here? What is new? Let me play what Sankari have um, said. Or I will give a better understanding so some people will not understand this. Again, I'll tell you this. None of the Gambian media, I take this challenge, Maliga, Maliga, Maligan, Malik, Malik, I, uh, Maligan, I have respect for. But every person has biases. Ben Swale have biases. I have biases. Depends what those biases are. But again, because of knowing that it's human to have biases, I have built in mechanism to insulate me for not taking those biases, uh, uh, to control my biases. I tell you that because it makes you a better person. But many entities in the Gambia do it for commercial reasons. You know, let me let Gambians understand this. When Ibama Sankara went to, to Coffee Time with Peter Gomez, Coffee Time Peter Gomez, go and find out if Peter Gomez will tell you that he's not getting paid for uh, public relations or similar things. If you believe it's not true, then you are very gullible. Or if you think Peter Gomez don't have biases, or Coffee Time don't have, uh, the, the West Coast don't have biases, yeah, they are doing very well in an aspect. But if you, I mean, we grow up with the labor, labor, labor government. I was in, inside the policy of labor government. We know how spin doctors work. We know how these things work. What they did is, and you can see it deliberately, when Peter Gomez addressed the, um, uh, the, 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 the allegations, he refused to call by a, a refer, 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 reference by name. He refused to reference the Open, uh, um, Open Gambia platform. He refused. When I challenged him, he said, oh no, because he's got a text, uh, just the text from, uh, from a friend. I make sure that whenever I write an article, I put my name clearly on it. I put the date, now I started to put the time. So that, because of the reason, if, if the text is copied, because I will stand by what I say. Peter, as a journalist, experienced journalist, would not read a text or take a text seriously if he doesn't know the origin, who, who wrote this text, how it came about. If it is so, if the text was so important, 
and he doesn't know the source of the text who wrote the text and very important that need to be heard peter would have clarified that to say that this is coming from an anonymous uh, i mean uh, point but no it was deliberate because the only reason the state house law of going to uh, there is, is they, they prepare these things it's part of their public relations it's called public relations now they came because they want to react they want to react because they know that it's it hurt where, where i point them but this is not new gambians should ask themselves why now i if you go to my platform today i posted something two years ago when i allege that uh, cham Abdullah Cham, the so-called person who was going to build the OIC hotel. I Two years ago, I alleged he bribed bar two vehicles and other things, but those are just handshake. They, they, they might, uh, because I was not sure about the other contributing, I said there might be other things. I know he buy, uh, he, he buy warambas and such stuff like from, from Baro. I did not even mention those. But the two vehicles I mentioned, which I'm, I was sure that it happened. But I know that two, only two vehicles will not make barrel to, to, to break the law and to force it onto Gambian people, something um, uh, adverse to Gambian uh, interests, for Mr. Cham. He doesn't love Mr. Cham more than he loves Gambians. No, he just loves himself more than he loves Mr. Cham and Gambians. And I said in two years ago that hotel will never be built, and today it's not built. But as I said, let me play what Shankar has to say. This is what made them angry. And Shankar had to come onto coffee time. Sankar know of me. Sankar doesn't know me. Sankar know of me. I know Sankar. I know Sankar when he was in Gambia. I know Sankar in the struggle. I know Sankar when he was in Birmingham here. I know Sankar who was double crossing the double crossing the um, 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 uh, struggle feeding information to for to to uh, to Amaru Samba to, to to get fed. I know Sankara using Amadou Sama to try by Germany to pay for his, his doctorate this thing in Birmingham here. I know Sankara uh, who betrayed the course of the 30th, uh, 30th December attack. I mean, with Nene Magdol, the same Nene Magdol Sankara have lobbied for now is the chairman of, 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 uh, of the GRTS. What Ben Suarez knows is more than that can be said on, on, uh, on record. But let's listen to what Sankara said. We have, a, we have a lot uh, to get through. You haven't been on this program for a very, very... a very, very uh, long time. News is doing the rounds, rumor if you want to call it, that um, the president has yet again been caught um, in a clear-cut case of uh, corruption and um, bribery. Um, he's been paid, what, 2.5 million euros according to uh, the allegation he's cut if you like from um, a bus deal uh, which is going to officially commission tomorrow 70 new buses uh, some have been taken delivery of and um, yeah so how does the president i'm sure he's read that um, his news has reached him yeah, he read it. you hear that my name the platform he came from he must have known if he he was not let known is his response as a journalist to do Gambi, that's why I said, if people are like us are silent, we don't expect. Why do you think the things are the way it is in the Gambia? Because of the most of the press are just PR agencies. They're just doing it not for anything else, is to um, accumulate wealth for themselves and uh, as a job and others. And I tell you, you'll be surprised how many business people are paying for so-called press. These things are not. And I tell you, Ben Suarez, and my hands are here. Nobody. Not gratitude, not everything. I'm not falling for that. But <laughs> it's worst. And everything I said, I have my proof. But today, I'm waiting for the legal. We go for the political. Let's hear Sankara's um, statement. Sure. He really so how has he reacted? Or how is he reacting? Everybody involved, I think, at least has also read it. Uh, we had an extended conversation yesterday, President Barrow and I, last night, mm -hmm. and I can assure you he has read it, and uh, he is very unhappy with it, 
uh, he has instructed the Attorney General, the Minister of Justice, to review the report and uh, uh, advise him legally what legal options are available uh, uh, to the extent that he is willing to even hire um, lawyers out of this jurisdiction really? in the UK or in America who can actually help deal with these, you know, scurrilous allegations against him, members of his government, his character, defaming him. Uh, I think uh, over the past years, the... Now, it's interesting. You see, the amateurists, they don't even know. They want to be spin doctors. They want to be communication directors. My training in communication, <laughs> he, he has brought the president into disrepute. Now, this is just to tell you why. You remember, I said, there's no allegations I've not made before. Why would a press president sit down in a meeting to discuss this allegation? That's the reason. We leave it there. But to the extent of getting involved, and he said all the people involved. He said, Kabul. I know. I know. Everything that's in, uh, been, been discussed around that time. There's a female, they, they hired a guy, they hired a female Gambian lawyer to write to Facebook to, 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 to ban, uh, to, to stop me. That's the stupid, one of the stupid, stupid, stupidest thing. They'll take their money. They already took, took, took that action. I'm not, they hired a lawyer in the government, a private practitioner, their favorite female lawyer, to, to write to Facebook. I know that. They tried to hack my account. Facebook accounts and so forth. Nothing. My emails, nothing. That's how much aggressive they are. Because of it depends on where I got this. How I got this. What? <laughs> Go and look at everything I've written. They know. Now, they thought of how to silence me. Again, the so-called I Amit mean, Bensuda have sued, because uh, this thing have sued. If I was in the Gambia even, I would say the same thing. It's that we are scared of not telling the truth. I would have been scared if I didn't tell the truth. That's why people insinuating, hey, now, okay, now, whoever. And yes, I am. I, I, it's a disrespect to say that whoever lies, I am not a liar. I did not lie. I did not have a track record of lying. Prove it. Let anybody vow me. I vow myself all the time. Let anybody vow me on anything half race. From drugs to anything. I'll come to that. Let anybody vow me. Bring it out. And I tell you, if you even cut it, I'll take, tell you the context I said it. It's not because of I'm perfect. No. Because when I come out to speak, my intentions are right. I insulate myself from every bias. I'm not saying I'm going to make mis mistakes, but I'll tell you, I, if I, you bring it out and I classify, clarify it, and people would, would be, be, be hearing, um, listening with the ears to understand, would accept my, uh, my, uh, my applications or my, 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 my narrative. They do this to scare. But again, how stupid they are. How can you think that Ben Swan would be scared of legal action? Tells you, no, if, oh, this is because it's half rich. It was, it's wildfire. And their intelligence told them this is wildfire. Now, it's not about Ben Swan getting scared. No, it's, okay, let's say this, Gambians, to know that Baro have denied this, this thing, they went overboard. You don't sit down and say what you talk to the president about. You don't do it that way. It could have been done in many ways. But for him, he thinks that's the way you say it. For Gambians to say that, oh, uh, uh, Barrow have denied this, Barrow this. But they don't want to use my name. They don't want to I mean, name the uh, Open um, open Gambia platform. And I tell you, follow Open Gambia platform. More is going to come. More is coming out. And you know why Gambia, you live in the condition you live in. I'll tell that. He said that. Now, to, for Gambians to swallow this. Now and then, this uh, so so called influencers that make so much money from Barrow, uh, Barrow and uh, uh, and the cartel uh, cabal, giving them as PR coming out to say, you see, I mean now, if got any gambit fear, make sure you don't you tell you if you know that you are not telling the truth, be fearful. If you believe in the truth, believe in yourself, say what you need to say. Now, if Barrow, you see again, this is why I'm not part of establishment politics. Because if 
I was part of establishment politics. Gambian politicians, you don't hear all this. They don't have to do anything. What the Gambian political parties should have done by now, parliament should have done by now to say this. Now, a private citizen have made these allegations. And it concerns the government so much that the government, because Barrow would not want to use his money, is ready. And if, if this law should, should happen, Barrow should do it on his own expense. Why? They should question the government. Why do you want to use our money to go to the United Kingdom <laughs> for legal action? Now, why not bring out the process, I mean, so I mean, uh, be transparent about the process. <laughs> Why not? This is what politicians should force Barohan, not for me, but for the good of country. So, force Barohan is easy, and let them not even try to uh, fabricate any, any document. Let them not try to fabricate any document. We know what we're looking for, we know what we've got, but this is the way they do it now. Let's see this. Then Sankaya continue. The, the character in question who, who wrote this, um, this, 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 this acerbic uh, piece of allegation has, has, has either through wild innuendo or insinuation uh, tried to align the president with even, uh, with even drug deals, uh, stealing elections, and all that. that. That could all be politics. But Now, he said that could be politics. Okay, okay. The president taking a bribe is less, uh, is more of a scandal than the president involved with drug cartels. One, the take the president taking a bribe is more serious to be considered than the president getting involved in fraudulent elections. As I said, the evidence of drug trafficking or not. If you go and follow everything I said and the way I presented, when I came out in October and talked about Gambia, be careful, be ready. The cartel, November, December, three tons of cocaine landed at the coast. How did I know it was going to happen? How did I know it's going to happen? Three tons. And every other ton that came out behind. Have you ever seen? Any senior person arrested in the Gambia will be prosecuted. None. Have you not seen the president in the, uh, I mean, um, Selabar Samate in the presence of the president? Have you not seen Selabar Samate sp spending money on, on president's campaign? And so Selabar Samate is a certified drug trafficker. Where did I have that wrong? Bante, Bante Keta, people say that he's not existing. He is in, in existence. Banta, 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 the president have met Banta. The president know of Banta. The president, uh, Banta's friend are linked to the president. You see, there are many ways you have associations. Where is Banta? The Banta's lawyer is the president's lawyer. And still now, the Banta's lawyer, Tambedu, is fighting for Banta's interest in the Gambia. Not only Banta. There is right now a guy called Pablo, a Pablo in the Gambia, a Guinea-Bissau national. He, he have a big front. You see, they are so-called big front party. Most of some some Gambians are owning it, but most of them go and check who owns them. That was in the Gambia. Big front. He's by one of the uh, this thing. He's by uh, he's bought a big big front party. He's driving very powerful vehicles. He is investing. That's what I'm saying. Again, in Gambian businesses there. That, that Pablo is, is connected to people who have links with the, um, the, 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 the drug trade in the Gambia because he, bring, he is the one bringing the most of the truck from, uh, from Bissau and, and his Colombian networks. And don't tell me, Pablo is known. He has been arrested before and released. He's known in the Gambia. He's known by drug law enforcement officers. He's known by... Go and ask the ID if he doesn't know Pablo. And do you know why Pablo is driving around Gambia, investing in nightclubs, investing in hotels, uh, uh, investing in restaurants, buying real estate? If you, you want to tell me, then, then the government is not compromised. That's one. 
elections. I said, why do you think Alaji Mabanjai is re resistant to leave? Well, look, and we can go on. We can go on. And I said, the same way I proved that the IGM was doing it, and to the extent of getting the circulation out, I think the same way can be proved that he's doing it. But again, how much, how much can Suleiman Swarin do? I've presented my evidence. Go and look at everything I said before the uh, elections, what was happening, and where, when the election came, what happened. Again, let's, let's just finish this. Now to suggest uh, in an election time that the president of the Republic of the Gambia, Adam Barrow, has pocketed some 2.4 million euros, 2.5 2.5 million euros, which is over 150 million dollars. When the, you have school kids here who couldn't pay their school fees, uh, you have university students struggling to pay their bills. Uh, I, I think it's, it's ridiculous. And uh, if you make this kind of incendiary allegations, you not only making allegations against President Paro, but evidently what you're also trying to do is to actually draw a... If I am making these allegations, they are now these allegations are more serious than the allegations of drug trafficking, allegations of, of, of election fraud. How stupid this man is. And stupid enough, a spin doctor, you use the lowest denomination figure. When this guy said 2.5 million uh, euros, that's fine. Why do you convert to 150 million? You are dropped. That's your adversary to do, not you, you the spin doctor. The, 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 if Peter Half said 150 million euros, you said, yeah, 2.5 million, 2.5 sounds smaller in, in the ears of people than 150 million. Again, this tells you that it's the immaturist. Don't be surprised if they stab themselves to bring this legal action. But uh, I mean, and I pray for that to happen. Let them bring it on. Rage between the president and the people that actually trusted him and voted for him in, of, in, in the office. You're doing away between the president and uh, our international development partners. You're doing away between the president and our diplomatic uh, members of the diplomatic corps and consular corps. And, and, and most, most significantly, here is Africa. And you know, political violence is very, very common here. You most significantly, you're doing a wage between the president and the security forces. That, uh, yes, you may not have uniforms, you may not have. Now, again, he is saying that with political violence, with violence, okay, what the drug epidemic in the Gambia is doesn't worry to, to him. That's not important. The drug cartels, the money laundering, the guy that is depreciating because of all this. Do you know how much of the what we call the A-grade um, North Korean dollars circulating in the Gambia. You think most of these so-called wealthy people in the Gambia are using U.S. dollars? They are using the A-grade. And you think the financial intelligence don't know? No, the government is striving on it. That's another allegation we want to take to the court. And let them tell us. Why do they allow certain transactions to take in place? Nandu, Nandu, the Indian Nandu, his son is arrested in Dubai for how long now? For what carrying tons and tons of dollars? And go and find out what the central bank was trying to do to try to get this person out. You think Nandu is just selling condiments in the Gambia, making profit and buying all the properties in Banjo? And then you have to go and understand um, financial crimes. And you think the drug traffickers are just bringing in drugs to sell in the Gambia? You don't know the, what exchange it is. You don't know the, the medium of, 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 of exchange between drugs drugs and fake, fake currency. A great. They are so good. That's why they use them from North Korea. I mean, we have to think about this more. And this literally saying before elections when i make my allegations before was before elections presidential elections for that matter no it's because of the fact that which i am proud of is trying to educate gambians or inform gambians to understand these bosses which we're going to discuss another time i'm not saying that gambians should not have bosses or something like that what have to be done in the right way a sustainable way bosses don't make profit that easily without being subsidized. 
United Kingdom here, private operators all have subsidy from the local government because of the, the important role they play in the social the social economic development of, of the region. Go and find out. It's not easy to make this. Then the pensioners' money should not just be thrown into it, especially thrown into it buying bosses at inflated price so that other people can, their motivation is two things polit cheap political capital they don't think about the sustainability and the I mean, kickbacks they have that's all their motivation is this is what they don't want voters to learn and my role is to inform those voters who are they going to vote is i didn't tell them to vote udp i didn't tell them to vote ca pedo ios anything else Get the informed, now it's up to political parties to harvest the enlightened voters with their policies and programs. That's what Ben Suarez does. Let's move on. This or that, what the person your commander in chief is corrupt to the extent that he is receiving some 2.5 million euro bribes. So, 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 so I'm telling you that President Barrow has instructed the Attorney General to look seriously into this case. And now, to think that the army are dumb, and I'll tell you, guys, one of the highest, I mean, I mean, academic educated right now is in that army. Academically educated right now is in that army. You think those people are dumb? They don't read the audit reports? They don't hear any other things? The audit reports, official. You think they are dumb, they don't see the change in you, the change in the Dusanos and other people following the president? You think they are dumb, they are not seeing the evidence of, of, of sitting guy uh, building three, man, three mansions at the same time? You think they are dumb, they don't know of that? Again, you would want to blame Ben Suarez for that. But again, this is what happened to the Jawara government, complacency. The Sehu Sabari and others. Uh, and uh, what do you call it? A accountant general um, Abu Dentin and others building two, three story buildings, two story buildings, and other people doing all these things. You think the army did not know? Don't try to blame me. Blame your act. Guys, just to bring it back to where it is. Now, why, why would anyone believe Baron and not believe him? That's my point. This is between me, politically, this is now between me and Baron. Why would you believe Baron not believe Ben Suarez? Can you bring me, can you bring out anything I've said that is lie? How many times did Baron lie to you? How many times did Baron lie to you? From, I am in Dakar. Oh, man, 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 damo doilu. Man, businessman, damo doilu. Suma three years late. Not even start to blame someone else for that. I'm saying Suleiman Suarez Baron. To our, our life. I have so many other records, thousands of thousands of hours that I spoke or learned about issues. Baro or Ben Swari, who would you listen? Now, all the allegations I've made, gun petroleum, because that's what I do. I, I don't become obsessed, but to impact, I follow things. And from gun petroleum, what did I do? I started from around May. Uh, Barrow visited Gun Petroleum. I blew the whistle. I said, Barrow visiting Gun Petroleum, there's bound to be a problem right now. Because that's the state capture how they operate. Go and look at the records. I said that before something happened. And I said to people that, what is? I said, you know, remember when Barrow went to the beach, uh, beach site with Ahmad Ba and others, they said that they were, most, were they checking the uh, hotel areas? That was when he said they accidentally met with Senegalese ambassador in one of the resorts, the uh, hotel resorts. That was a lie. I told you that was a lie. That was demarcation because they made some demarcations for themselves and their friends. And then Ahmad Ba was going to show him the demarcations. So that was the only way Barak could have gone and see them. Now to pretend that they're going on a sightseeing. When they visited Gun Petroleum and Barak made a statement that will Gun be nice, Gun Petroleum. Gambianized Gun Petroleum. What, how can you go to Gambianized Gun Petroleum? Gun Petroleum is only owned by Gambians, technically, uh, Gambia Post Authority, Social Security, and, and others. What is not Gambianized about Gun Petroleum was when Barrow sold 
shares from Muhammad Basi that social security wanted to buy, Gambia ports wanted to buy. Barok sold that to who? A Mauritanian Senegalese businessman. With the son in Barok. Uh, I think their company is called Petronas or Star Oil. Listen, they sold the shares. Who did not um, uh, gambianize Gambian, uh, Gambian Petroleum then? That's where it started. That's where it started. Gambian Petroleum today. Oh, so two days ago, I didn't even bother to report that. Two days ago, there's not a drop of oil or petrol in their tank. Two, eight, two days ago. Not a drop. Gampetrium for months they have not exported petrol from Gambia to uh, Mali. You know how much damage is that to our economy? Now, they accused two people and they could not find those two people um, guilty of any crime. At their own cause. Then who is responsible for the problem with petroleum? Those people have left for almost over a year now. The problem persists. Then who is the problem? Who is the problem? Remember, Barrow came out here to say that they were, uh, he was invited by the uh, family, royal family in Dubai or in uh, UAE. I broke that info news days before it was announced by government. How do I know? And I said to you guys that be careful. Barrow is going for many deals. But I mean, there might be, I didn't even accuse, I said, there might be something going on in the entourage that Barrow don't know. Then I said, there's already an advanced party. Mohamed Yaw was part of the advanced party. Idi was part of the advanced party. And this might to deal with oil and so on. There's another advanced party by somebody, I forgot the party name. They were trying to do something, a deal about oil ex exploration. Now, the people, there are people around Barrow who are going on this trip in the same flight are involved in trafficking of gems, gold or stuff like that, and likely drugs. When I broke that, preempted, I preempted side, I, I, I dripped it down. Barrow should thank me. What did they do? They cancelled that trip. They said they postponed the trip. How many, it's almost two years now that trip has not been talked about. Did he not find out what I said was going to happen? Because he was carried. Because he doesn't have the intelligence officers to do their job. Because they are, enti they are entirely corrupt and compromised or not experienced. I sat here, United Kingdom, I get those information and, and I was proven. They cancelled the trip and the trip did not happen again. You think that if the royal family have invited him as they portrayed and everything was about, what made them cancelled? What they made them pop or postpone when they when they're gonna have it now. If I accuse the president, Gam Petroleum, where's Gam Petroleum today in the brink of bankruptcy? And I tell you, already there are negotiations they try to do, they try to see how to deal with this international organization. That's why they don't like me because I, I say things with substance, and you see, those people don't get it now. That's why I spend more time now developing articles that come in on video because the articles are reaching places that video doesn't reach that's why too they don't want open gambia to, to, um, to be known articles are reaching places that they don't reach now come petroleum technically bunker. now they look find the way and don't be surprised who will be the buyer they're looking for a way to buy, but now they're looking at how to deal with this international um, um, IMF and or a World Bank. They're looking into it, but they're trying a way to sell it to Gambia. I'm not going to, I'm not going to elect, uh, bring the Gambian's name, but we'll find out what they're trying to do. You see, they bankrupt things, they buy it. They bankrupt, they bankrupt. I mean, I mean, I mean, um, Julbro. Go and find out people who bought the property that Julbro is Mohammed. Yeah. They don't like it. And look, every other thing I have alleged here, let them bring it something that's not fact. How can you trust Barra then? I have, we have about it. You know, the people have heard about this 100 mosque project. 
the, there's mon so much money that came through banks with, with SISDG and give it to banks. You know, they tell us oh, we're going to be women guarding things. Like they lied. They ate that money. Their relations with Saudi and other things that was going on. Remember at that time, every day you hear a Saudi officers coming? I'm not going to go into that. We averted something very serious. And still the government doesn't know how we avert it. To the extent of the United Kingdom selling their, I mean, I mean this thing for Africa. To sit with Baro and read the rare act on Baro. Because Baro was so gullible. If we did not, based on my understanding of intelligence, not dip in, into that and get the intelligence required and, and strategize in making sure it gets to where it was, today Gambia could have been uh, destabilized. Because they don't know what's going on. Now, things that I said, the OIC um, project, from day one, I followed it. The projects, where are they? Apart from the conference center. And I said, I talked about kickbacks. The hotel, nothing, not a brick. In, in December, I was there, not one brick I've been put on. And do you know what we averted there? This Mr. Cham said Mr. Cham wanted to use social security to, as a guarantor and use those things and go and seek money and, and come. The company w was registered. The company he said had was registered 2015. The company didn't have a dime. A dime in the account. The company did not have one project uh, delivered. How can you trust that person that he can raise 100 million? How is it either illegally? Or if, if he's going to do it, his government uh, be used to do it. And he wanted to use government. He wanted to use this liquid base of social security, social security to act as guarantor, and Barrow was about to do it. We went out there and punch it and get it out of him. Who can you believe? And that's why. What could have happened is, we have seen these things happen before. Use those documents, social security guarantors, come to West and other places, get financial backing based on these guarantors. And he default and they go for social security. And Barrow was um, ready to do it. Do you think Barrow does that because he loves these people and hate the Gambia? Or Barrow does it because he's getting something directly? Come on, sell Gambia. Then would, why would anyone come out to say that? Yeah, yeah Ben Suar, now we see. Ben Sura lied. What did I lie about? Oh, I mean, Ben Sura now taking the examples now. Every lie, uh, anybody who comes to lie, probably they are the one who fabricated a lie. But what I said and everything is on records. And it happened. After how many years? The bankrupt, I mean, the, the, we see the struggle in the OIC. Listen, there's a company called Gambisara. Have you ever had Gambisara Construction Company? No. The person involved. It was a, um, a vendor, small dealer. Barrow make him to uh, create a company to be given a contract. How can Gambisara win a co contract bid? Never build a road, never maintenance a road, never build a house, never done anything, and win a bid to build a road. Uh, pick, pick Ford or Picky Ford, a Sierra Union company. They joined with, with Gambisara. That Sierra Union company, $500,000. Kickback. Where go and look at their lot. Why do you think that construction is dealing? I'm not sure that Picky Ford is still uh, involved anyway. A Sierra Leone company, go and look at their records in Sierra Leone. Barrow, when is Barrow going deliberately to do this to us? You think Barrow is doing it for what? For what? These are all bad contracts. Giving it to people on this. You think he's doing it because he loves these people? Hate Gambia? No, he's doing it because he's getting something out of it. Common sense tells you that. Then why should you doubt if Ben Swai said that he have evidence? Or, or, or Barrow have taken a kickback? No, because of you. If you said you knew, you are enlightened, but you are part of it. But if you follow, you might not, you might follow and, and repeat what these people say. That's why I'm telling you guys. You see, say, oh, are you Lola? Because somebody else apologized. To Ami Ben Suda, ben, then Ben Suda to my the same thing. I be the struggle, be now, I be the first republic, 
my character. I've never. I will shank the alcoholics. I am not people that run behind Amon Sam looking for the pants. I'll do anything. I started at the bottom here to where I am and where I want to be, where I want to reside. I started from the bottom. I've done everything but dignify. I've never borrowed money. I didn't pay even to banks or anything. I've never uh, begged or anything. Even if I'm ill, I will work. Now, look, we can go on different things. You think the airport contract, you think Barrow Love, that uh, uh, not even white man, a South American, this thing, uh, so much that he will draw a very bad contract. Not that he doesn't know. The, the justice ministry told you, the, 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 the people in the, uh, the finance ministry told you not to do it. I mean, the, the, the stakeholders, tourism stakeholders told you not to do it. Barrow used executive powers to do it. And I tell you, and I accuse him again that Barrow took a, is taking a kickback. I don't know the amount. I don't know the amount, but he's taking a kickback. And if you want to take me to court again, let me take you to court that I said he's taking, let him add this, that he's taking a kickback from, from, from the uh, airport this thing and and if that happened i tell you all the people that takes kickback from that airport this thing would be from sierra leone the first lady of sierra leone to now let the first lady of sierra leone to put me on the suit we'll tell you how the contract came into them there is told you how it came to fatu cc how it went through the ibrahim cc and went to barrow and that's why we to use this executive powers that, what does it make sense barrow to use this executive power just to benefit others he's not benefit from it gambia is not benefit from it go and look at the contract what draws the national uh, um, audit office said guy contract guy construction contract abandon contract i explained this uh, in intensively extensively in uh, in an article it is true because of binding contract, Barrow had those two properties in Senegal. He did not return them. The guy, the guy that gave him the properties, was a Senegalese um, uh, uh, chap. Some, this is another chap. This guy worked with Amadou Samba before. They built. Uh, he was a contractor, subcontractor for Amadou Samba, and um, they built the airport and other things. Now he's doing real estate in Senegal. He is doing brilliantly. And he's half Gambian as well. He's more from from Gambian, from from Afdai. And um, when Barrow went uh, to Senegal during the impasse, Amadou Samba took this guy to, uh, to Barrow. And this guy said to Barrow that he have this thing that he can come and prefinance to the development of Banyan, you know, and explain his background for Banyan and so on. And Barrow said, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." And he invited Barrow. To say, can, let me show you some of the things I do. At least that person have a track record. And just forget the name. I got the name somewhere. It's not a usual name. A Marcham, thank you very much. Marcham, 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 Marcham. Marcham took Barrow uh, and his delegation to the estate and said to Barrow, Dina may say Jabar, Na may say Jabar, Bena, Kedgi. And someone in the uh, entourage named Malni, the Baronyari Jabarla Am, Munoko Bon Nako May Benen. That's how the two compounds came about. Let them tell me I'm lying. And Marcham was ready to come and prefinance. You know what Baron Bar Bar did? Elijah CC and others went and undercutted Marcham. They sold Hadim Guy to Marcham. Uh, so to Baron. Hadim Guy's contract. Obviously, the kickbacks. That's how it came about. Hadim Guy don't have the finances. They lied about the finance, pre-finances. It's coming true. Hadim Guy don't have the expertise. Hadim Guy was condemned by the Janet Commission. What's, you see, the same thing Tariq Musa was condemned by the Janet Commission. Now, who is lying here? Who should you believe here? Who should you believe here? That's, I'm just doing this for the so-called people standing out there, I mean, to, to, to scare other people. Oh, Barrow, don't let God be silent. Let Barrow bring it on. There's so many allegations I made. Let him pile up everything and bring it on. Just as they said about, even let him bring the election suit. Even the election suit alone. I proved that the election is stolen and the election has stolen in Gambia. Marcham, 
That's how the contract came about. And he locked Malcolm out and gave it to Hardin Bay. Now the National Audit Office said everything. And in fact, Maligan exposed it first. National Audit Committee confirmed it. The 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 the, 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 the Karamba Ture of the National Audit Office said it's a cash cow. Gambians still don't know how much um, uh, is is been taken out from 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 that contract. Tell me. You know people are crying about Norwich. <laughs> Barra is having kickback from Norwich. Barra is having kickback from from car power. I am not sure about the figure yet, but there's a figure being put out at ten thousand euros a month from car power. And other allegations are making. I am I am not saying the exact figure is right, ten thousand um, euros, but. Allegations are 10,000 euros borrowers having from car power. That's why you're having this problem. And you see, if I have time, I would have explained. I did this before, explained everything how car power contract was constructed. Remember Alaji Conte? Alaji Conte, who left Barrow and joined the UDP. And when UDP, uh, Barrow strangled him, he ran back to UDP, lost the election, he, he ran back to um, Barrow. It started from Alaji Conte. When Alaji Conte went to UDP, he bought Lamin Sima. Lamin Sima was indicted at social security reporting to the police for selling people's land. But you see that they, they victimized three people or four people taking them to court, but Lamin Sima was part, not part of it because of Barrow is sealing him. Again, that's an allegations I make. Let Barrow take me to court. That Lamin Sima, I mean, there was something Mambure who was at uh, Kapa. Go and find out why Mambure, uh, Mr. Mambure left Kapa. Some Gambians are decent. They don't want to be part of certain things. Go and find out why Mr. Mamburi left 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 left, left Gap, uh, car power. That's why when they came with car power, PR, car power, nogo, nogo, car power nonsense. Go and find out. Car power was meant to be temporary. Go look at They're trying to get car power to secure a 15, 15 years lease. You think why they are getting all this? Because of the kickback they pay. Lamin Sima brought in something jai. I forgot the name of something jai in, in place of um, Mr. Mamburi. Now, that's how they constructed, that's how the money has been, been given. And you you think, you're questioning why your dollars is this depreciated. Now, if they pay car power, the, uh, the, the, how many millions? I forget the number, uh, every two months or month. Or three months how many millions they pay the same thing to Senelec. i can tell you how the current contract in Senelec came about no wonder he said that he's gonna call um 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 Makisal to negotiate because i am not saying that there's any kickback in 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 Senelec. Senelec, the problem with Senelec is the executive power that Makisal used because of the security guarantees to force borrow to, to accept the Senelec deal there are so many things wrong with the Senelec deal. That's another day to talk. And again, I accuse Barrow. Uh, I, I made that allegation against Barrow. Let him put it on, onto a chat seat. Now. Now, you ask yourself two things. If Barrow is doing all this, the, the, the na, na airport project, uh, gun petroleum, uh, and everything taking a bad decisions against it, impacting, affecting Gambians. You know how many gun petroleum was making, exporting fuel, and earning us foreign currency. You see, um, unless uh, say Gambians, some, some of us understand the balance of trade deficits. Whilst we were selling um, petrol to money, and other countries, they, those people were bringing safe out, they were being dollars, we had been euros, and in us. Now the airport uh, levy is affecting us by their air, I mean, a lot of other things. Every decision is about, that's why I said the m members of parliament, they meant to impede Barrow on all these contracts did not. This is an opportunity then for Gambians to hold Barrow to account by taking it to court. By taking it to court. Now, Let's look at the other side of it. Other side of the coin. Now, if I allege that then Barrow is doing all this because he's benefiting, where's the evidence? Again, I am not going to bring in the legal evidence, material evidence. I just want to Gambians to reason out. What is Barrow worth now? How many properties Barrow have? 
We know how much he earns. We know how much per diems he has. We know the allowances we paid for him and everything else. But do you know how many properties Barrow have everywhere else? I am not saying he have properties in the United Kingdom. Because, but if I'm asking a question here, does the first lady have properties in the United Kingdom through in an intermediary? That's how I'm going to put it. Does the first lady have a property in, in America, in Seattle, to an intermediary? You see, we are not stupid. If I want to construct an allegations which I did not have certain material evidence or difficult to prove in court, I know how to put it. Now, I am asking these questions. And you know why, how it would be easy for me if the government have challenged me on whether First Lady might have properties, might have properties in the United Kingdom through an intermediary. Because we know the rep. We, we know about the First Lady having a property, buying the former Foreign Affairs Minister Omar Sif's property uh, for how many, over how many millions in the Gambia? At Fayara? Fayara? And that he bought the property in 2017, 2018? You know, the timeline too is important. When did they accumulate this wealth? How many properties did Barrow have in the Gambia alone? In Senegal? And his people? Did, did Barrow's two, two nephews become a millionaire? Amadou Sane and Jagasane. How did they become millionaires? Now, the Barrow's sister, married to a, a, a man, immigration officer, was a vendor. Now, doesn't, didn't she have the millionaire status as well since Barrow came to power? Bully, Barrow's brother, did he not have the millionaire status since Barrow came to power? What was Barrow worth before coming to power? You see, we can look at all that. And why would you not give Ben Suarez benefit of his doubt? I have not have talked about lying. Why would you disrespect me to say that I am lying? Yeah, now I'm Ben Suarez taking people to court. Now every, anybody who lied, you are insinuating that I am lying. No, it's not that you are dishonest. Because if you are not dishonest, you you know for fact that what I say is a fact. But don't carry other people. It's a big thing. Carry other people with it. You knowing that what I said is true. That's why we should be very careful. Other people have their own, because I, I, I have seen comments where other people are fighting their own, people have alleged on them. Now, I know when they are, are listening, but be brave enough, go and name the person who you think is alleging against you. But don't wait for this situation to happen, then start to insinuate. This is to address the people who follow, not no, not them, those people. Now, if all these properties and transaction accounts and everything are full, where do you think the money comes from? It's either government money. And I tell you, it's not likely government money because it's difficult to take government money. You don't go and take it like this. You take it in many ways. And kickbacks is one of the most famous ways. Kickbacks, giving contracts. Now, Another evidence. <laughs> Yesterday I did not say how much did um, um, someone who should know, um, Gita, Mohammed Gita, uh, is it Mohammed um, um, Ahmad Gita said that West Coast was given to one person. That means is it Islamic City? Is it 15 million, 16 million dollars for West Coast elections? West Coast election. If Lamin said he is given 16 million for West Coast elections, how much was given to the person in KMC? Uh, under Nyang and others. How much was given for, for Basse? How much was given for North Bank? How much was given for Banjun and other places? And how much million that is? That NPP doesn't have a dime. If a businessman gives the money, why do you think a businessman will give that money? It's not that form of kickback. The businessman must have something favor from the government through Barrow. How many millions in every election cycle? That's been the presidency. If he gives if he gives 16 million presidency to one person in the West Coast, how did he give for the parliamentary and now? Does that not that make sense? Does that make make sense? Well, how how you believe in Ben Swari or you believe in Barrow? Or where are the facts? These are the facts. Some of it would come to a court. But I am treating this 
as just the political uh, discourse. What's coming to court, I am not showing my hands, as I said. But I tell you, if Barrow takes Suleiman Swire to court in the United Kingdom, prepare Gambia, know that you're going to regain your blessing, unless, I mean, you, the Barrow Jalangs have hold you guys not to uh, rise up and get him out. Because enough evidence will be presented in the court of law. Hence, your, your MPs cannot do it. Again, remember, when Barrow... I mean, came out with how many vehicles for MPP? How many vehicles? How many vehicles? How many millions is that? Where did Barrow get the money? We all see the bill of loading is in Barrow's name. Even if it was in NPP name, where did NPP get the money? A, a party just been formed. Now, Gambia, who, I mean, what is this all about? What's this all about? We have seen the improvement, transformation. Those people who were in New York, in other places, London and other places, who did not have a better life in the diaspora, which, which is very surprising, where all opportunities are here. We see them in Gambia now, they're looking better. Their skin looks better. They, their appearance looks better. Now they don't look malnourished. They look even younger. They, their attire is looking better. Now they are turning, other people are turning into multimillionaires, being politicians. I mean, sitting guys building three mansions at a time and other things we don't know and others and others. They're sending their children to private schools and every other thing. I mean, the evidence is out there. Now, Gambia, and I'll tell you, I've not even mentioned, I didn't have even time to go for the oil exploration scandals. That's why I say, I'm an individual. I have a family, I have a work, I am preparing for my retirement, and, and all the things. It takes time. But if I am telling in a court of law, we can go in. And I tell you, people will come from the world, you'll be surprised how information comes. Again, um, don't let people not worry. I know there's so much um, Facebook journal, I mean, legal things or whatever it is, but I said I am informed and I, I, I am prepared for this. This is my way of life now. I, I, I'm resolved. I am not someone who's running for worldly things and other things. I am a natural activist from childhood to where I am, and I am going to be an old power activist in the mosque and everything else. That's with my life. Take it that way. I am not a politician. But again, if it comes to legal, let me just rest assured you. <laughs> not today. Um, especially United Kingdom. You know, United Kingdom is even chosen by many people to bring their lawsuits, libel cases, because what how practical the courts are. <laughs> but it has um, produced lots of surprises. Tiny Rowan, Tiny Rowan and al uh, People who knows the case, Tiny Rowan and al Fayed, Muhammad al Fayed of, of Harris. And um, the Hamiltons lost everything because of taking the legal actions, uh, uh, defamation and everything against al Fayed. Um, um, this um, minister uh, got the tall minister, what's conservative minister, lost his position and lost everything and was tried for perjury and taken to um, taken to prisons. He's, um, he's got a post name, post conservative. His care, um, God, forgot, I mean, he's out of the limelight now, I forgot his name. You know, that's the outcome. The McDonald's, the McDonald's chain took us, um, I don't. I don't think it's Greenpeace. I forgot the BBC. The, but they took a case, defamation and all those things on brands of McDonald's against an environmental movement. They got hammered. McDonald's, not only their shares, not, I mean, hammered, they lost their case. Because there's a way, <laughs> there's a way the case is going through. Uh, it's not, it's not them um, in the game, it's not like, I, I'm surprised seeing how Gamb Gambian different lawyers are defending, uh, I mean, I mean uh, how to call it, libel cases. I mean, uh, completely flabbergasted. Uh, they, they don't, um, in America, in America, um, the Meat Farmers Association or whatever you call them in America against Oprah Winfrey. Go understand that. 
against Oprah Winfrey. In fact, he, it catapults Oprah Winfrey's um, position against a comment that Oprah Winfrey made. But bring it back to even Gambia, at Asantix and um, Sanamane and, um, and, 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 and Seho Sawali. Nafasaho got, I mean, dealt with. All the people got dealt with. The were government got exposed. There are so many. Libel cases is not something to be scared of. If you, if you know your position, you are factual. You know where to stand. Be reassured. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. But make sure you are not reckless with your statements. If you're not sure, there are many ways you put across your statement. Put it as a question. Put it as a question. Write it and put a question mark. Finish. I'm not stupid. Okay, guys, it's tough taking longer. Uh, three hours. I've not done a, a program like this for a long time. But as I said, it was important to construct it this way. Um, to give understanding to many people who have recently followed me. I don't know who I am, my basis of do, doing things and how I come out. People would, people would think, no, but how many things do I know? How many things do I know? Thank you very much, guys. Have, um, I've been very busy and I, uh, developing articles is not easy. I'll tell you, it's, it's not easy. I, especially, I am not an academic. It takes me time to express myself the way con competently as I want. It's easier for me to say it, but then to put it pen and paper, I need to go through a um, lot of thinking and structuring and everything to get it to flow, you know, all those things that matters. And I'm um, time again to do things and so on, but there's so many coming. Whilst I am developing an article, there are other things coming in that I'm evaluating and dealing. But I am hopeful that um, we'll build, build, build a team. I'm in the process. I'm trying. I'm trying to be inclusive, building a team. But again, I I respect my sources. <laughs> That's why again, this intimidation to my sources. I respect my sources. I have. I raise my hands. Jamaica, to now, I've never disclosed a source. My source have never been into trouble. The most serious one was the APR. I mean, going after the APRC bill. To the end of it. People don't even know I was associated with it because that's why I choose to be. Anything else. Two is the integrity as well. We have a lot of people that would want to volunteer to do things, but I cannot trust them. They are in for something. I am looking for people who are in for government. I'm not partisan. As people, some adversaries would want to believe or not. No, the thing is, pre let me put this. I mean, no, no, no. I am an anti-establishment, and I am very fondly being seen with the opposition because I'm, I am anti-establishment. If anyone comes out from government to this thing, will be you know, at times I advocate things that look sounds to be supporting APRC when I talk about criminal justice. But that's what it is. Thank you, guys. Been a long one to show the series that we can do um, programs in very core and no problems. All the jollas. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.